like that. Okay, so here's the live stream for what month is this? March of 2024. Um, coming to you again from the car in, well, technically Matthews, North Carolina, but um, on the outskirts of Charlotte. So um, this is the best setup I can get for the phone, um, but we'll just have to deal with it today. Uh, either this one or next month, probably next month will be the last one that's going to be streamed from the car like this. Um, once I get back in Ohio, I'll have all my filming equipment, lighting and uh, tripod and all that stuff. So this is the last one we should have to deal with the whole, like everything in the way issue. Um, I see, let me see if there are any comments yet. Uh, oh, Hey, left sharks here. Hey, Case. All right. Um, so, first of all, um, I don't know how many people are going to be here. Um, this whole Easter being the last Sunday of the month thing kind of screwed everything up. Um, so, that's why we're doing it today. I hadn't actually planned on making one today, um, so it was super last minute. Um, ended up scheduling myself off for work today, and then just, um, yeah, so scheduled this early this morning. Hey, Max. Um, so it looks like people are starting to pop on. So uh, first thing that I wanted to discuss with you guys, and I meant to do this like two live streams ago, but um, before I forget, you know, the White House keeps making these announcements about student loans. And that's a huge thing for me um, because, well, I have a lot of student loans. So I was wondering, um, with that new announcement where they're going to forgive everything up to, I think, $12,000, um, does that actually affect or help anybody that's watching? Um, I was really happy about it when I heard about it myself. And then, then I found out it doesn't actually help me at all. Um, so it's like $12,000 and then an additional year for each $1,000 that you originally borrowed on top of that. And this is only federal loans. But I went back and I looked at my federal loans and I don't remember the number now, but it was like way higher than 12,000. It was something like 30 or 40,000. So my loans were already gonna be forgiven after 25 years, which will be 2037 it would be 12 years after I graduated. So I'm 12 years into it, into the 25 right now. They were already going to be forgiven then. And then uh, I counted up, you know, an additional year for each thousand. I was like, well, hell, this doesn't do anything for me. Um, it's, I still have to wait the 25 years. So didn't help me at all. Um, the only thing that might help me is I saw more recently than that, that Biden is proposing that, um, student loan forgiveness be tax free permanently. Um, as of right now, they did make it, I think through 2026, um, it's tax penalty free. Uh, but see, I always planned, I always thought that if my, or like when, I guess, in 2037, when my federal student loans were forgiven, that I wouldn't have to pay tax on them as income uh, because there is a IRS form you can fill out um, that is basically for insolvency. And if your net worth overall is still negative at the time that you get that 1099C cancellation of debt form, then you don't have to pay the taxes on it. You just file this additional worksheet um, and form with the IRS and tell them like, hey, I have a negative net worth and you don't have to pay that. So that was always the plan. Um, and this sounds weird, but I'm actually concerned that my net worth will not be negative in 13 years. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not going to try to keep it negative. Um, but I'm... 
so I'm hoping that this new plan does go through and that um, it'll actually be. I just know I won't have to worry about it, even if I am not poor in 13 years. Uh, let me check comments real quick here. Okay, no new comments. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is that I have slowly been getting better um, as far as finances. It's super slow. And I plan on making a video sometime probably in early July. It's going to be after I'm back in Ohio, after I have everything set back up. But it'll be a six-month update to those financial goals that I put out. Um, but just as sort of like a mini update to that, starting at the beginning of March. March? Yeah. No, February. Starting at the beginning of February, I started putting a little bit of money away in savings. Um, but it's like sort of a special type of savings. It's not an emergency fund where I can only touch it um, in an emergency. It's sort of like separating off this little bit of money uh, intentionally to spend it on things that have been neglected. Uh, like the first bunch of money I set aside was saved up money to get an oil change because it had been forever. Um, and now I have almost enough, I'm about $5 short, um, of getting my tire fixed. Um, some of you guys know my passenger side rear tire has had a nail in it for almost a year now. Um, I have to fill it up every day and it never goes completely flat. It goes down to about 22 to 24 PSI. Um, but basically as soon as the light comes on showing that it's low, I, I go take care of it. So that's literally been a double daily struggle every day since June of last year that happened and I was about to get it fixed last year and then I got a nail in the front one so I ended up having to change and spend the money to get that tire which then turned out to where I didn't have the money to fix the back one so anyway things are slowly getting caught up um, the next for, for a little while, this stuff is going to be car stuff. Um, but the next project, which will probably be able to be taken care of around the beginning of April, if not a little bit earlier, will be I need to get a car charger for the car. I have one. I talked about it last live stream, I think. I think I fried it somehow. I mean, I've had it for like, oh God, 11 years. Um, but it just doesn't work anymore. And I'm having a really hard time keeping, like, the phone charged. I've had to end up taking a lot of time that I probably could have spent working to go sit at a library or at a fast food restaurant that has a charger, charging my phone rather than working. Um, so that's the next project. I've got one scoped out. It's $15 at Walmart. Um, and I'm going to hope that that's the problem because the other issue could be it's like a blown fuse or some other weird thing in the car. Um, and if this doesn't fix it, then I'll, I'll have to figure that out. Um, but other things, I mean, we got that oil change. All the lights are now fixed on the car. All of them. Basically all of them were burnt out, not the headlights, but, um, brake lights, side marker lights, um, front side marker lights. Um, there was, oh, the, the license plate lights on the back, those are burnt out, those are fixed. So slowly, this is happening. And that money that I'm able to save and set aside, that is going toward that. Um, so Casey, yeah, I saw your comment. You said high interest savings. Um, it is high interest savings, although there's so little money in there that it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, I mean, I'm like the tire, for example, is around like $100. That's including the tire, which is on sale right now. So it's like $9 off, plus the fee for getting it like installed on top of like the, the actual purchase price of the tire. So it's gonna be about $100. I have, I don't know, 
90 something in there right now. And, um, so probably this week I'll get that tire done. Um, it's not actually like a huge deal. Um, to be fair, like the tire is fine. It holds air. It's been like this for a year. So it's not an absolute necessity, but this is just part of like getting my life and getting my shit back together is that I shouldn't be having to go pump my tire up every day. So move in the right direction. Um, now I do also have another tire. It leaks very slowly. I fill it up about once a week, uh, once a week. Um, there's also, for some reason, that one tire has a tread issue on it where it, the tread's really low. So that's going to be the next one. Um, yeah, um, that's going to be the next project. So it's going to be this week, this tire gets fixed in a week or two, I'll get this. Hopefully that's the issue with the phone charging. And then that'll open up more time for me to work. And then the front tire here, that'll be the next thing. And I'm hoping to have that done before I drive back to Ohio. It's not like critical that it's done. It's not like metal showing out of it or anything. Cause I definitely have had tires like that before. Um, it's not like to that point, but it would, ju I'd just be more comfortable if, uh, it was fixed. Um, and then after that, I think I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, since some things will be patched up on the car. Um, and that should also be into my busy season for task rabbit and furniture assembly. I think what I'm going to do at that point is, um, put some of the money into paying off some of the past due invoices that I have from the lawsuit. I have one for the uh, process server. That's only like $75. Uh, and then I have quite a few from the court reporters. Um, I, I actually don't even know how much those are. Cause they're like, there's, there's a separate invoice for each one. So I'm going to slowly get those paid off. Um, other good news is that, and I see the comments coming in. I will get back to you guys. It's just, if I don't say this now, I'll get completely sidetracked and lose it. Um, so that started in February when I started being able to save and it's a dollar per delivery if I'm doing DoorDash and Instacart, which I'm not doing all that much, but, um, or if it's from TaskRabbit or Furniture Assembly, then it's 5% of whatever I get paid. Um, so it's just a few dollars here and there, but it's slowly adding up. Starting the beginning of March, uh, it kind of started because TaskRabbit started offering a 401k and not only have I not been saving for retirement, but when I was living with the roommate, essentially I had to drain almost all of my retirement accounts to pay him. Um, so I could stay housed and, um, pay utilities. And so, um, and so anyway, I don't have very much hardly at all in retirement. And obviously I'm like, I'm not really in a place where I can contribute to that. But what I started to do is, um, for furniture assembly and task rabbit, I am putting 1% away. Um, I had both a Roth and a, and a, uh, regular IRA. Um, and so I'm putting 1% into my Roth. So it's literally, I'm making deposits of like 80 cents and, or like a dollar 50. Um, and I think so far this month I've contributed less than a thousand dollars, but I mean, it's something. And that is in a high interest, um, case. I, I think I forgot to respond to your comment about that, but, um, basically if I don't have it invested and it's just sitting in the account, um, it's going to sit in a, it's a money market fund that's at like seven point, wait, no, no. It's like 5.22%. So it's pretty high interest. Um, and then for my savings, um, that I'm putting away, even though it doesn't stay in there very often or like very long in order to gain, it is daily compounding interest. So I do get something and I don't know what my interest rate is 
Traditionally, this has been a high interest account, but it's changed so much that I don't remember what it is now. I think it's over 1% though. So, um, I'm saving and getting some stuff caught up that way. I'm saving for retirement. Um, in the process of all this, getting the car fixed up. And, um, what was the other thing I'm doing? I don't know. There's something else financially that maybe I'll think of later. Let me get back to the comments real quick. Max says, glad you did the oil change. That's to me, this is high priority. Yeah, um, definitely, like, yeah, that was the very first thing that I saved up money for. Not only is it high priority in general, but also because, like, I'm also living in my car. Um, but also because the, like, I mean, it had been so long. And... I would, it was just what like way overdue, um, and I know so many people give me shit because I don't change my own oil, but you guys, I have a 2013 Subaru Impreza, like just Google that. The car literally sits about two inches off the ground. I can't get under the car, and I even got um, there was a tool library in Athens, in Ohio, and I rented the low profile ramps, meaning the ones that like are more gradual for lower sitting cars. And it tore the bumper off, which my bumper, look, my bumper is a mess, but like every time it gets caught on something, it comes off. And, um, that's pretty frequent. It's, I've got it zip tied on now because it's come off so much, but, um, but basically I literally, even on the low profile ramps, I can't get my car onto ramps. Like it has to be put up on a lift. Um, or there has to be like a pit under it, uh, in order to like get to the bottom of the car. There's, it's, there's literally no way for me to change my own oil. Um, so yeah, so that said, um, there's some other stuff that I'm going to do on the car. Um, but you know, it's headed in the right direction and Probably in, I'm thinking around probably mid-year, so probably early July, I'm going to start um, saving a little bit more. Like, I'll probably save 10% instead of 5%. And then, of course, that's going to be the same type of savings where it's not hold on to it forever. It's set this aside to catch up on all your other crap. Oh, yeah. Also remember the other thing, um, guys, I'm going to sit like this. This is killing me. You guys might just have to deal with the uh, steering wheel being in the way. Um, it was killing my back leaning over like this. So the other thing is, um, I am within the next few days, I will be caught up with Naviant, um, which is my private student loan provider. So Naviant, I was like multiple months behind. I think actually one of my, yeah, actually I think one or both of my loans, I might've been 120 days behind on um, because I, I know they've emailed me twice offering to, to make a settlement instead of charging it off. But I made a payment arrangement with them in January and I did miss the second payment, but I made it up. And then the third payment of the payment arrangement is coming out on the 26th of this month, which I will just barely have the money to clear the payment. But that's going to put me on both of those accounts back in good standing. So, I mean, yeah, obviously that's good that I've, I've got caught up. Um, and then also, you know, it's going to help with my credit, which is terrible after everything that's happened the last couple years. So that's kind of headed in the right direction as well. Um, let me get back to some of the comments here, and then I've got some other stuff to go over with you guys. Um, Case says, have you thought about doing daily blog? More contents might get your channel more viewership instead of monthly content. Yes. Well, okay, to answer your first question, I haven't really thought about doing those. 
I really don't like that style. I mean, I don't do anything that's interesting to begin with, so I'm not sure why people would, like, watch that. I also know myself, and even if I shot, let's say I shot one day of content, um, it might take me a week to edit that and get it all uploaded. There's no way. And, you know, especially with me having issues finding, like, places to charge, um, I, I just basically, I know that it would take me forever to get, like, one day of footage done, let alone trying to get that done every day. Um, I also, I, I will make blog, blogs, vlogs, vlogs, yeah. I will make vlogs every once in a while because I know you guys request them sometimes. Historically, when I've made them, even though they were highly requested, like, no one watched them. They had, like, the lowest views of any videos. And then I'd just be like, well, shit. Like, I didn't want to make this in the first place, and now everyone hates them. Um, now, I will say the two vlogs that I made most recently, which were about me living in the car, they've done pretty well. Um, and I do, probably over the summer, I have a couple of other chapters I want to add to that series about living in the car. And I will do those. You are right about making daily content, even if it is just like day in the lifestyle video. But um, I do have one major hurdle. Um, well, I say that and I, I think of a couple, but like one absolutely major hurdle um, that is kind of pressing me for time and keeping me from being able to do that. And that is um, I am still actually working on something not for the lawsuit, but regarding court and the girl. Um, now, that'll all be over next month. I'll tell you guys a little bit about that later in the video. Um, that's what's been occupying my time. Well, sort of. There was stuff I had to get done before I could even focus on that. I will tell you guys all about that, though. Um, just that'll be later in this video. Um... Uh, so, Case, basically my answer to your question is n no, because I really don't like that style. I do agree I need to make more content, and that will happen, but it's going to have to be sometime after April 22nd. That is, like, my final deadline to turn all this stuff into the court. And while there might be, like, an occasional thing, like a follow-up thing, it's not like the lawsuit. It's not like it's going to be for months or years. It's literally, it's a, it's a one-time thing that I turn in. If they're going to do something about it, they will. If not, well, that's it. I don't do anything else. There's no appeal. There's no, like, second step. Um, and it goes pretty quickly. So, hopefully, um, yeah, ho hopefully it's just as simple as, like, getting this stuff written up, turned in. And then at that point, and I'll talk about this a little more in the video later, but um, I've told you guys, I've kind of, ever since she filed that restraining order in February of 22, everything has been on a timeline where I faced deadlines constantly and I just haven't had any time to like relax or decompress or catch up. And um, when I dropped the lawsuit, and then I found out from the court that it was actually dropped in the end of January. I've had about two months now to catch myself up a little bit, even though it's just been a little bit. Um, you know, I had a little time between then and the deadline for these things. Um, but then after these things, this is the last thing that has a deadline. Um, there, there might be a couple of small things I'll do later on, but... It might be a month later. It might be a year later. It's just whenever I have the time to do it. Um, rather than if I don't do it now, I can never do it. So let me. Oh, John, I somehow skipped your comment. Um, John Doe says, hey, Mark, it's still freezing in Ohio. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, it's fully summer here. Um, I have the window down. I'm, I'm just sitting in... I am sitting in the shade because it's actually so hot in the um, in the sun. 
but I'm sitting in a parking lot um, and I have the passenger window down. So I actually don't know what the temperature is here, but it's like reasonable. Um, I am still, of course, in like a lot of stuff on like Facebook um, for for Ohio and I see everything that's going on there with the temperature and the weather. And um, I'm just kind of watching it to see like, okay, you know, when, when are you going to be ready? Like, um, because basically as soon as I get these things written next month, I'm ready to go back. Um, I am, yeah, basically I'm ready to go back. I'm just waiting on the weather. I mean, in the meantime, that gives me time to get the tires fixed. I'm shooting for being in Ohio early May. So we'll probably do the April live stream down here still. And then, depending on weather, early May. That's mud season in West Virginia. So that's going to determine a little bit about how how exactly I go back. I will tell you guys more about that hopefully later in the video if I don't forget. I don't want to ignore the comments, um, so I'll try to get back to that. Um, John E. Was there a lot of paperwork required to early withdraw from your retirement accounts? Do you expect that you'll have to pay the 10% early withdrawal fee? Um, there wasn't a lot of paperwork. In fact, I don't think there was actually any. Um, so I had three retirement accounts that I withdrew from. One was with JP Morgan Wealth Management, um, which was an old IRA that I had through an old job, but I never rolled it over because I was getting like really incredible returns from it. Um, and I took that out entirely and closed that account. Um, that was 22 because... I'd lost the fraternity job and had just started the court process. And of course my roommate was taking advantage of me, but I didn't know that yet. Um, so yeah, so that was to pay rent and utilities, that kind of stuff. Um, and then through, I have Vanguard for, um, my two other IRAs, which are, uh, a regular IRA and then a Roth. Eventually I'm going to do a backdoor Roth conversion on the regular, but I mean, clearly that's like a plan for down the road. That's like, I got way too much other stuff to do right now. Um, but like throughout all of them, I don't think there was any paperwork. I know I called them and I, I think they had to read me like a bunch of legal stuff and they had to record me saying that I agreed to it. Um, I will have to pay the penalty. Um, there's really just no way out of that. And in fact, see, I had to pull out of my retirement in 2017 when I got fired from my job. And then in 2020, when I had that job that paid a lot, I paid everything back that I took out to make myself whole. But I remember that when I did this in 2017, there was some kind of rule where if you pulled the money out, and then put it back into another retirement account within a certain number of days, there was either no penalty or less than a penalty, less of a penalty. So you're talking about a 10% penalty, but for some reason I'm thinking there was some determining factor of whether it would be 10% or 30%. And I've just been assuming that I'm going to have to pay the 30% tax rate on it. So who knows? So you guys know I'm also behind on filing my taxes ever since the whole court thing happened. So that is one thing. Oh, yeah, that's another thing, guys. Um, so, of course, I'm probably going to be late paying it this month because it's due on the 29th, and I don't think I'll have the money by then. But I am, as of now, officially completely caught up with getting my storage unit paid. <laughs> God, because it's been months behind, too. So you guys can see that, like, while my day-to-day -day life is still, like, let's be honest here, it just sucks and it's really, it's really tough. I mean, I had like $11 in my checking account this morning and had to use my rewards points to buy McDonald's for breakfast. So like, that's where I'm at. But 
I am actually making progress in getting my life back together. And um, I'm also about to hit the busy season with TaskRabbit, which means that that's going to get a lot easier here pretty quickly because I'm just going to be making a lot more money. So, yeah, um, I lost my train of thought. What, what was I responding to? Oh, that was the paperwork. Uh, okay, I have no idea how I got on that tangent. I don't know. Um, I had some reason, and I had something else I was going to tell you guys about that, but honestly, I don't remember. Um, my brain's still overwhelmed. I'm trying to, like, decompress and get myself back to normal. But I, I forget a lot of stuff. Okay, so Case says, have you heard of Passport Bro? If you have, have you thought about just doing that in another country? Maybe life would be better, money and dating. Um, I have heard of it probably just this year, I think, is the first time that I actually heard the term. Um, I mean, the concept of it, I think, has been around for a while. I guess I'm not, like... So, like, for example, if I'm here in the U.S. and there's somebody, like, some girl that's an immigrant from another country, I have no problem dating her. Um, traveling to another country... So, I mean, because there's kind of this thing with a passport, bro, that, like, as far as I understand it, and I might be wrong because I, I haven't looked that far into it, but, like... My understanding is that's either just to find, like, a wife or to just hook up. But, like, it has to do with, like, like relationships, basically. Um, but then there's, like, also the thing of just moving overseas because it's cheaper. Um, and what I'll tell you guys is I'm open to dating an immigrant who's here. And back three years ago me and the girl had planned to move out of the country. Um, mostly because we just wanted to travel and hadn't gotten too much. Um, but also because she has a long history of health problems and she needs, she needs the socialized medicine. Like she just constantly has medical bills and stuff. Um, so we were going to move to Raleigh for a year or two just to get out of West Virginia immediately. And then while we were in Raleigh, figure out we were going to take some trips. She wanted to go to Canada and Australia. And we were going to go there um, just to figure out, like, where else we liked. Um, and from then figure out where we were going to move to. I'm quite set back from escaping the U.S. now. But I ultimately would like to leave the U.S. Um, and I know, like, well, I'm a millennial. But I know a lot of millennials and Gen Z are trying to leave the U.S. if possible. Um, so, as far as moving to another country, yes, definitely. I'm not sure it's going to be a country that's cheaper. Um, I guess that would depend on on where I went. Um, the other thing is that you said as far as dating, I mean, I don't want a girl who wants me for my money. Like clearly that's not a problem right now, but I think I mentioned this in the last live stream, but when I do start dating, I actually have a plan and I feel like this is I don't know if it's not going to work or if it's going to work perfectly, but I feel like I'm not going to get a lot of second dates. Uh, but basically my plan is I'm going to do like the traditional thing for the first date and I'm going to pay for everything. And, but I'm going to tell her after that, be like, Hey, I'd like to see you again, but I have a policy that after the first date, like everything is 50 50. Like we go out to dinner, you pay for your half and I pay for my half. We go out and do something. You pay for yourself. I pay for me. And I'm, I'm doing that in order to weed out gold diggers because I don't, maybe it's just Charlotte 
I'm going to find out when I go back to Columbus. But, it, you know, you guys, I haven't dated in 12 years. And that was when I was in college and nobody expected you to have money. But um, every woman that I have encountered on any kind of dating site since I've been in Charlotte has been just overtly after money. <laughs> like, um, I told you about the, the girl that demanded that we go on a first date to a five-star restaurant and that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm just not doing that. And especially after I was taken advantage of financially by my ex, and then after that by my roommate, um, and I'm trying to rebuild financially now, like, I'm just, I'm just not doing it. Like, I don't care if it's out of the norm or not. Like, if a girl actually likes me, she'll pay her half to go do stuff. Um, and, uh, okay, so let me, oh, and then, okay, so I guess my point in all of that is I'm like, I don't think I could ever be considered, like, a stereotypical passport bro, because I'm not gonna use it, like, the part of that that is, like, to use your financial advantage in order to get a girl, I fundamentally don't want to do that because that's what I'm running into what women in the U.S. want you to do is they want, you know, they want to find out that you have money and they want you to spend that money on them. And I'm not going to do that here. <laughs> so it's also not something that I would want to go overseas and do. That said, I think the other part of that that you were suggesting is that possibly women outside the U.S. might be less terrible. Um, and, I mean, the only thing I can say to that is, and I, I will say that when I was seeing my therapist, she said she agreed with me on this, that what I went through with this girl, most likely I will never find something that bad ever in my life again. Um, that it, like, compared to all of her experiences as a relationship counselor, she's never seen anything like it. So basically I won't have that many problems, but, um, I, I also, I don't know. I mean, I see the, I see the point that like a lot of American women are awful. And especially at my age, I'm 38. If somebody's single, there's something wrong. Like in my, in my case, it was because I was in a relationship for nine or 10 years with somebody that turned out to be awful or, or, or changed to be awful. Um, and you know, so I essentially went through a divorce and that's, that's what's wrong with me and all the baggage that comes with that. But you know, other people that are 38 and single have other issues that have made them that way. And so, um, you know, whether it actually be something wrong with you or something like this happened to you, you've gone through something and it just seems like most of the people that are left at this age have some major, major issues. Um, a lot of which I probably don't maybe want to deal with. And I think that you may be right in the case that like somebody from outside the U S might might not have some of the same issues. Um, but I, I don't know. Let me uh, get to some of the comments here. Uh, Jennifer, hey. Um, no, you're good. I don't even know what time it is, but you're good. Um, oh, you're only 20 minutes late. You're good. I just, I scheduled this last minute anyway. Thank you for being here. And Case says, for first dates... You should always go for coffee dates, so it is cheap, and it weeds women who are only here for expensive first date and ghost after. Um, yeah, I mean, so, this is me making things complicated. Um, but, um, okay, so this, this is... This is me making things complicated, but you're right. Like in the simple version of life, it would be great to just go and like say like, hey, let's meet up for coffee. Me making things complicated, 
I don't drink coffee. And, um, and then like when a lot of times girls will suggest coffee as a first date. And when I say like, oh, like I don't drink coffee, but that's fine. I'll just get hot chocolate or something. I kind of always get the response of, oh, well, like I don't want you to make you do something you don't want or something you don't like to do. Um, and, um, and then a hundred percent of the time that that's brought up, we never actually go on the date. So I don't know. Um, I think there's just something off putting to people that I don't drink coffee. Um, that's why sometimes I think I'm like, man, I wish I lived in Utah because like nobody drinks coffee there. Um, and well, it's the same thing with like alcohol because sometimes people say like, Oh, let's just meet up for a drink. I'm like, well, I don't drink. Um, guys, my hair look, I'm going to have a little story time later about my hair. Okay. But just ignore it. It's going to be falling all over my face. Um, so basically I, I guess I have two things working against me is that like, I know you're right as far as like suggesting the first date like that, but the, the easiest things, getting a drink or getting coffee, I don't do. And then when I say that to people, they either think it's weird, um, or like I said, every time somebody suggested coffee and I'm like, yeah, I'll just grab hot chocolate there. They're like, oh, well, I don't want to make you do that. And then I like, it never happens. So I got to figure out a solution. Um, case, I just saw your comment about the tea date. Um, I'm, I, well, I guess I can do, I guess I can do tea. I don't hate it. I, I would, I like sweet tea. I mean, I guess we could do that in the South. Be like, yo, can we go get like, I don't know where you would go just to get tea, but, um, I don't know. It's kind of a, now ice cream could be a thing. Um, so I don't know. Well, I'll figure that out. But basically, um, as far as your idea of like, I know that kind of thing, like a, like a simple, screening thing, you're right. That's probably the best. Um, and since I'm wanting to kind of, I am hesitant to say this cause I don't want to immediately get friend zoned, but like I, I would prefer to develop a friendship with somebody before it turns into more. Um, and because I, I want that, I think it's easy. It's like better for that to, to go on that type of, of date. I'm totally cool with like, Hey, let's, let's grab something and go for a walk. Um, but that's me coming from my background of being like super poor and also coming from a town where there's nothing to do. Um, because where I'm from, you can go walk around Walmart at night and that's a date. Like you're not doing anything, but like, that's the only thing there is to do. Um, so you have to be like really creative in like, okay, how can we go to Walmart and, you know, I can make this fun for her, that kind of thing. So I'll have to think on that and come up with something, but I will also say as of right now, um, I'm not really trying to date in Charlotte cause obviously I'm, I'm leaving. Um, now I have hinge set for Columbus cause you can change the location on there. Um, I currently am not using Tinder or Bumble just because they go based on your, like your actual location. And so I won't start using those until I get back. Um, so right now I'm not really like, oh, I'm definitely not talking to anybody, but I'm not like really in a position to be trying to find anybody either. <laughs> um, so I'll see what happens when I get back to Columbus. Um, I don't know. Okay, so let me get back to some of the comments here. Oh, Jennifer says, hey now, don't judge us 30-something single women. Uh, I'm recently single after 10 years with a great guy. We just grew apart. Well, 
yeah, I'm not trying to judge you in particular. I guess I'm trying to... I, I'm seeing it as me looking at the dating pool and being in it for the first time since I was in college and kind of thinking, okay, this appears really bad on the surface. What's going on? But then I also have to self-reflect, right? Because I can be like, oh my God, like all these girls are crazy. But then like, I have to be like, okay, well, I'm old and single too. So what's wrong with me? So it's kind of like looking at like, well, why am I in this position? And then trying to understand just like most of the good people are taken and I'm open to the possibility that there are still some out there. Um, but also it just like kind of statistically looking at it and thinking most of the people at this point that I'm coming across are pretty off. I mean, oh my God, I mean, I told you guys about the, the people that I've been matching with on, on these sites and they're, they're all kind of, kind of off. Um, so yeah, um, it didn't used to be that way when I was on the sites younger. Uh, and I, I think that's just most of the, the people that, you know, are, are completely sane and have their shit together. Like they're taken. And I, that's not to say that everybody that is on those apps is not sane, but, um, I mean, some people are in situations like me and like Jennifer, like where, you know, her relationship just ended. That's kind of the same thing with me. Of course, I, I got a lot of baggage from the end of mine, but, um, I, I know that there are people out there that are still sane and 38, but, um, let's see here. So, uh, uh, case says, if you were a woman here in this live stream, I'm sure you're okay. We were talking the other 99%. Yeah, I would hope you guys know that when I'm talking about this. Um, because basically, if, you, if you're if you tolerating me putting up with this and not getting offended by it, then I think that uh, you're probably not one of the crazy ones. Um, but I would just ask you, on behalf of male kind, um, just don't, don't expect a guy to put so much effort into a first date. He doesn't even know you. The point of the first date is to see if he can even stand you. Don't make him pay several hundred dollars for the date. Um, okay, Jennifer says, I'm not traumatized or a gold digger, but I am in no rush to get in a new relationship either. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's understandable. I mean, coming from somebody who is traumatized, um, like, I, I see your position as kind of the same as me where I'm like not like I'm open to something but not really looking for something um but yeah with with me it's just like there, there's extra stuff I got to work through on top of that um yeah and then case says to go for a tea date Jennifer says, I think you and I are doing the right thing, waiting to find the right person and being okay on our own meanwhile. Yeah, um, so in my particular situation, like, it does suck because throughout this whole process of this relationship, I lost everything. Like, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail with it, but like, I pushed a lot of people away completely accidentally just because I was always so upset with the things that she was putting me through. And I'm, I mean, that going on for years, people don't want to be around you. And that's my friends. That's my fraternity brothers. I mean, of course my mom, today's her birthday, by the way, which I feel super terrible that I'm not going to call her, but just with the situation going on with her, i yeah, I can't, I just can't do that. I, I can't call her. I think maybe tomorrow I'm going to text my cousin and just ask about how she's doing, but, and hope maybe word gets back to my mom that I asked, but I got to keep those boundaries firm, which is something else I'm trying to learn. So, um, but yeah, so that makes me really sad if you couldn't tell about that, but basically 
Um, but basically, you know, my ex was my best friend as well as my partner. And so when I lost her, I lost both of those things. But before that even happened, I kind of lost my mom over it. I lost my friends, my fraternity brothers, basically everyone. And so I think that it's easier to be on your own as far as a relationship when you still have like a support network, like you have family and friends. And I really don't have that. Um, and especially with me being location independent, it's really hard for me to build that back up. Um, I think this summer I'm going to reach out to my little and he lives in Minneapolis, so we're not close, but I know that he knows what I'm going through. He just doesn't know this last few years of it where it's gotten the worst, but I think that's a good place for me to start to rebuild. And there's a lot of people that I'm probably not going to reach back out to, but I mean, he's, he's a positive influence. So, um, you know, I'll reach out to him, but that's probably a few months down the road. Um, let's see. Fresh Light says you can just go and then take hot chocolate. You know, I don't know if you mean like taking hot chocolate in there. I might get kicked out if I do that. But um, I might actually just not say that I don't drink coffee and then just order hot chocolate when I get there. Then that way they can't like back out because we're already there. So that's an option. Because I think just about any coffee place does have that. And they also have tea. So, I mean, I could order hot chocolate or tea. It's just, I'm a child. So I, it's basically like drinking chocolate milk and well, that's what I generally go for. Um, so I will get hot chocolate most of the time. Let's see here. Uh, Jennifer says, well, yeah, I can agree with, uh, that, that the dating pool is not the greatest. I was on a few weird dates before I got off the dating apps. Agreed. First date should be easy going, like going for a walk or grab a coffee, nothing fancy. Fancy is for when you are in a relationship, I think, or at least in the beginning of one. Yeah. Um, so that is kind of what I've tried to, I don't know. I like, that's how I, I've always operated. And I think this is with me, like thinking about this and thinking like, why do all these women expect me to like take them out on something fancy? Why do I just want to go hang out? I think a lot of it is because the last time I was dating, I was in college and that's how you get to know people in college, like either from class or just somebody you run into on campus. Like you might end up at an event with them or you might end up just walking across campus with them or something like super casual and that's how you get to know them and that's what I'd still like um of course without being in class and being on a college campus that's kind of I don't really have the opportunity for that I guess I could put myself on a college campus but then I'd be the creepy old guy um so I don't so I think that's what it is, is like, in my mind, I'm still trying to like, I'm thinking of like college style dating and that's what I want. And I'm hoping I can find somebody that is okay with that. Whereas I think most women that are my age are wanting somebody to take them out like formally and they want to go like to a big dinner and they want to go, I don't know, some activity. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's not just that I'm not in the place to spend money like that. It's that even if I am, I don't want to. Um, not for a first date, not getting to know somebody. Um, and I also, I want somebody to want me for me. Because there is going to be some day where I do have my shit together. The main reason that kept dragging me down is no longer in my life. And so I should make continuous progress now. And, um, you know, someday I will have money and I want somebody that wants me for me and not because of that. So 
I'm going to do like my relatives did because I think I've talked about this before, but like, I'm not from a poor family. My parents are just, both of them independently squandered their own inheritances. So, um, but like I have cousins and extended family who were extraordinarily wealthy, but you would have never known it. Um, you know, they, they dressed basically like they were homeless. They drove cars that were like 40 years old. And some of that was intentional, where they were intentionally trying to look poor um, so that people didn't try to get money off of them or, like, because, like, you, you're kind of like a lawsuit magnet when you have money because people try to go after you to get some of the money. And so there's a lot of lessons that I've learned about that. And, I mean, you know, if I was, like, a rich dude and had, like, a very expensive car and I was seriously into dating... I would probably get some just shitty old car to roll up with for the first date and see how she reacts to that. If she's okay with that, then I can show her the real car the next time. Um, let me see. I got mine on comments here again, I think. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So, Jennifer, I, I agree with you. Um, I've got... Um, my thing would just be like hanging out, getting to know each other. Um, I always like food. So it's like food will be involved pretty soon. But then as far as like, maybe like getting dressed up and going out to a nice dinner or something, that's more of like an anniversary kind of thing. Um, I can't say that's a hard and fast rule. Cause like if there was something I really wanted to go to and I just started getting to know you, I might still ask you to that, but it's just because of the timing of when that thing came up, not of like when that was, uh, in the relationship, I guess. Um, so, uh, digital business Pakistan, can I be a moderator? Well, I do need moderators, but I haven't seen you comment on the channel before. So I'm only going to pick moderators from people who, have been around for a long time and been engaged in the channel, um, where I can, you know, I can know that if I put them in a position like that, that they're gonna, you know, they're gonna do the right thing. Um, okay. Max says you should watch WrestleMania in two weeks away. Um, I've never watched it. I'm not really into wrestling, but if there's a particular thing you think I should watch, let me know about that. Um, I will, I might have to watch it on YouTube later because uh, I don't have like TV or anything, but I can, yeah. I mean, if, if there's like a certain video, you can send that to me and I'll watch it. Uh, let's see. Jennifer, um, unless you are a company. Oh, wait, hold on. I've missed some of your comment. Americans are strange with the lawsuits. If you said you were going to sue someone in Sweden, they would laugh at you. It is not a thing here. Unless you are a company, then you can get sued by the state, not a person. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that makes more sense because, like, online, uh, people talk a lot about how Americans sue each other all the time for everything. And then, like, I mean, I guess it makes more sense of, like, why they're in such disbelief of that if that's not even a thing that you can do. I thought it was just that the culture was that people didn't do it as often or like there were more hurdles to like, like it was harder to achieve filing the lawsuit. Um, yeah. So in America it is lawsuits are very common and it's also even way more common a threat for somebody to say that they're going to sue you. Um, as far as them actually filing it, and like going through with it, it's a lot more common if you have something for them to take. Um, so that would be, you know, like I was saying, like the, the more money that you have, the more at risk that you are of people filing lawsuits to try to get it. Um, and now for me with, you know, with the girl, she's 50, 50, like she has money, but a lot of it's tied up in, 
investments that her parents manage or a trust fund, that kind of stuff. And I don't think I, I would be able to get access to that. For me, I was suing more to make a point. <laughs> it was sort of like, I'm going to get a judgment against you and it doesn't matter to me if you can actually pay it or not. Um, you know, I want somebody to rule that what you did was messed up. Um, so you, I mean, you can kind of do it like on principle. Um, but here in America, just because you win a lawsuit doesn't mean you'll actually get the money. Um, it is really common though to be sued. Jennifer says, well, a person could sue another one, but it is a complicated process and usually nothing happens. And if something happens, it is usually for small amounts of money. Yeah, so in the U.S., the, the amounts of money are enormous. Um, like, usually millions, tens, or hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, like, I sued my ex for $4 million. Um, and... I would say, so like in the U.S., most lawsuits settle out of court, like before they actually go to trial. Um, but that's usually because there is some kind of agreement that's made outside of court. Um, like they, you know, agree to give you a certain amount of money to drop the lawsuit. Um, it's so it's not really here that nothing's done. Um, and the courts here, for the most part, they'll let anything go through. Um, if on the surface, it looks like the case even could possibly have any merit to it. Um, now I do know there's a guy I went to high school with who I didn't realize it, but apparently he's completely batshit crazy. Um, he had told me he was a lawyer. Turns out that's not the case. I don't know what his deal is. I don't, I don't, he, he's obviously it's some kind of mental illness, but like he keeps suing random people. And I went to the Supreme court's website and I was looking at this one. Um, he sued the state bar association, which is like the, the association of lawyers for the state of Ohio. He sued them and demanded that they give him a law degree law degree from Yale University and admit him to the bar in Ohio. Um, I mean, well, they don't, the judge can't issue you a degree. Also, Yale is in Connecticut. It has nothing to do with Ohio. Um, I, I, like, I don't know. This, the guy is nuts, but like... But, like, ev that's the kind of case where the judge might look at it on the surface and be like, okay, <laughs> like, there is no point in letting this go through the system. Um, but, like, almost all cases that are filed, it's called prima facie. If it looks like on the face that it could at, in any way have any um, merit, they have to let you like basically they, they have to let you move forward with it. Um, so yeah, it's, that's, it's super common here. Um, let me see. Was that the last comment? Oh, uh, John morning, everybody. John, where are you that it's morning? It's like 4 PM here. While I'm waiting on more comments, I'm going to tell you guys about what's going on with my hair. Um, we got two issues. We got hair and sideburns. So I get a lot of comments on the sideburns. Um, they're not staying. When I or originally moved down here, I planned to get my hair cut. Things, you know, they've just kind of gone off the rails while I've been down here. So I didn't end up getting my hair cut. Um, and now I'm so close to going back to Ohio that, um, basically I'm just not going to, I'm going to text my haircut dude. And when I get back in early May, it's going to be all cut. 
Um, that'll fix that. The other issue is the sideburns. What's been happening, I am not intentionally growing them out, but what happens is every time I shave, I shave up into the line where the end of my sideburn is. And I don't know how it happens, but it just keeps getting longer and longer and longer, even though it looks to me like when I'm shaving, I'm cutting them to the same length. So um, I don't really have any control over that, but that'll be fixed too when I get back to Ohio and get the haircut. <sighs> um, and if I have the money at the time, I'm going to get my eyebrows done because I haven't got those done in like a year. Um, I'm going to really make an effort to not be homeless. Well, <laughs> to not appear homeless. Can't really do anything about the homeless. Um, um, let me see. What is that? Uh, Fresh Light says, who did you say you will reach out to after a few days? Oh, um, I think you're talking about my cousin. Um, so today's my mom's birthday. It's a long backstory, but my mom and I haven't talked since fall of 2022. Um, I feel really like bad and conflicted about all of that. Today's her birthday. It makes me feel bad that I'm not reaching out to her, but she just keeps being really mean to me and trying to interfere with my relationship. And she keeps hanging up on me. Um, that was the last thing that happened. And I've told her before, if she hangs up on me, I'm not talking to her again. So she did it anyway. And um, I haven't talked to her since. So it's been like a year and a half. And, um, you know, I feel bad because she's old. I want to have a relationship with my mom, but I also just don't want her to, to treat me like that. And so I think what I'm going to do, um, there's a cousin who is about my mom's age who visits my mom and I'm going to text her and just ask her, um, about what's going on. She knows the problems with my mom and she doesn't really get along with my mom either. Um, so I should be able to find out. And I was hoping that she might mention to my mom that I did ask but I think she understands where I'm coming from as well Is like, I can't just keep letting everything my mom does slide because she's old. Like, cause she just, you know, keeps taking advantage of that. Um, but yeah, so, um, that's what I meant by that. Um, case says get an electric shaver cutter for hair. So I've got one, um, and I do use it. So I use it for a few things. Um, it has a nose hair trimmer attachment thing. So I use it for that. Um, I, I've got a couple of like random hairs, just like one hair that grows on my ears. And so I use it to trim that. And then I have, um, I do generally use it even when I shave, I'm even using it to like cut a straight line at the bottom of my uh, sideburn. And even with doing that, it seems like I just can't keep it from creeping down. So I'm gonna text my haircut dude, trying to make an appointment with him. He's like, I think it's $35. It's like, it's not that expensive for a haircut. It's like 80 here for, for men's haircut. Cause I did look into it. Oh, fresh lights. Not about your mom, about the positive force you mentioned. Um, that is my little, bar my little brother from my fraternity. His name's Colin. And, um, he is, um, what is he? He's about four years younger than me. I think he lives in Minneapolis and, um, He's had a rough time after college as well, but like he has more of like a stable environment. His dad owns a pharmaceutical company and his mom's a lawyer. And um, they, um, um, like they, they help him out like a normal family does. And um, so I think that, um, 
I think, I mean, he knows I disappear for periods of time, basically. Um, like, he knows that I disappear for periods of time um, and pop back up. And he also knows about the girl. He does not like her, um, which is not my doing. I didn't turn him against her. It was just he's seen what she's put me through. So um, I'll, pop, I'll pop back up again. I'm be, I was telling him it happened again. And um, so, yeah, that's who I'm going to reach out to. Um, over the summer. And the good thing about that is he, he lives with my grand little. So like I have my little brother in my fraternity and then my grand little is my little brother's little brother. And they've been close ever since college. Um, my little is from, well, he's from Wisconsin. He moved to Minnesota. My grand little is from Ohio. Um, but he moved to Minnesota with my little and I'm trying to think I know my little does something at a bank he's like a mid-level manager at a bank and then my grand little last I knew he was the HR director for some big event venue in the city so um, so yeah they kind of have their lives together They've got a big social network, um, and I don't know. It would just be better for me if I reconnect with them, um, especially now that I know in any conceivable way the girl is not coming back. So, like, it's not going to be like before where I finally reached out and then she pops back up um, and ruins everything again. So, yeah, well... Um, let's see. Uh, Greg says, I understand the relationship with your mom. I've lived with my mom since December 14 of last year. I'm trying to reestablish myself at work and continue my education in graduate school. We come to disagreements about household chores. I do pay her rent and help with utilities. I have to struggle just to get things done for work when I am at home. Yeah, my mom and I were in that situation um, the end of 2015, beginning of 2016, I was 30. And for the first time as an adult, I had to ask to move home because I quit my job because there's video about it on this channel, but it was, they were treating me really terribly. I was really unhappy and, um, I didn't have anything. I could, I, I was applying for jobs, but I wasn't finding anything and I just couldn't stay. I just could not stay long enough. And I just didn't have anywhere to go. I asked my mom at 30 if I could move in. Um, but when I did, she absolutely just took such extreme advantage of that. And, um, I mean, and that ultimately is what actually led her to living in the nursing home now. Because prior to me moving in, she was completely independent. But suddenly when I moved in, she was incapable of doing anything. And she had me working a full-time job plus a part-time job. Plus taking care of her full-time, running to town, bringing her food three times a day. She also ran a cat rescue and she had like 40 cats that lived outside that I constantly had to be running and getting giant bags and cases of food for, and then I had to go feed the cats. And it was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that was also in the time period where she would, she refused to eat anything but ice cream. Like, all day, every day, that's the only thing she would eat. And um, I could not get her to go to bed. Like, she would keep me up all hours of the night. And then she would wake me up in the morning screaming, like literally screaming in pain because she was having some kind of, I don't know, some kind of issues in the bathroom, which probably is because she was eating ice cream for every meal. Um, and I mean, she like, just literally, as soon as I moved in there, she made me do everything for her. And um, 
really took advantage of me being there. Like I, I knew I would have to help out. Like I, I expected that, but I didn't expect her to just suddenly stop doing everything for herself. And then when I moved out, um, you know, she got used to me being there for a few months where I was doing everything for her. And then suddenly, you know, she had to start doing stuff for herself. Um, let me see here. Okay. So I'm getting behind on comments. Um, okay. So case says any task, grab a job for shaving. You can travel to do haircuts. I mean, I can't even cut my own hair. I'm not going to be able to cut anybody else's. Um, I don't think there's a category for that on TaskRabbit, though. I mean, honestly, it seems like a category they would have, but I don't think there is. And since TaskRabbit's owned by Ikea now, like, even though they have a ton of different categories, most everything gets, um, like, it, it's really just furniture assembly is the main thing you get now. Um, I also have pet sitting as one of my skills, but I've literally only been hired for that once in the few years that I've been on the app. Let me see. Okay. Um, Seth says, hey there, has, how has your financial situation fared these last several months? I enjoy your content. Um, so my financial situation like completely fell apart in like October of last year. It was simultaneously, I had to start putting a bunch of money up front for the lawsuit. And also, it just seemed like all of my work dried up all of a sudden with TaskRabbit. I had been the busiest I'd ever been with it, and then it just, like, disappeared. And then at the same time, my backup. So, like, when TaskRabbit would be slow, I would do, like, uh, DoorDash and Instacart. And... At the same time, like, that all this other stuff was happening, Instacart lowered their base pay from $7 to $4 a batch, um, making it so that, like, most of the batches were not worth taking. And then um, DoorDash lowered their pay from two twenty five dollars an order to $2 an order, which doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but it was also around the same time where everybody was so sick of tipping that, like, nobody was tipping. So every order was, like, $2. And it just, nothing made sense to take. So it's, like, my main job, like, kind of disappeared. And then my, um, my backup jobs were falling apart. And it was at the same time that I had to have the most money up front for the lawsuit. So things were really bad. And I started getting behind on stuff. That was, like, October, November, December... And then into January, when the lawsuit was finally dropped. And since then, since like the end of January, I've started making progress. And I started talking about it earlier. I know you probably missed it because this is live. But earlier in this video, I talked about the little steps that I've been able to, um, to make forward since then. Um, basically, so far this year, I have started saving again. But it's not an emergency fund. It's a way to set some money aside to deal with past issues um, that need to be caught up on. Um, the first thing that I used that money for was getting my oil changed, which was way overdue. Um, here sometime this year, this this year, this week, I'm getting a tire replaced that's had a nail in it since June of last year <coughs> that I have to fill up every day. So we're going to get that taken care of. Um, but those things are slowly um, getting taken care of. I've got a lot of other smaller things in the car fixed. Um, I also started saving for retirement again, uh, starting the beginning of this month. I did that. Um, and I have plans in the beginning of July to up the amount that I'm saving. Um, so, oh, and then I got caught up on my storage unit payment and also... On the 26th, when my last payment comes out for the payment plan I was on with student loans, um, that'll be caught up as well. So I still have to get caught up on credit cards. I'm behind on those. Um, my mom's storage unit I'm behind on, and I need to get caught up on that. But um, 
I'm getting there. It's very slow because I don't have a lot of money to spare, and I'm still in the slow season for my job. It really doesn't pick up until about early May, which is about when I'm planning to be back in Ohio anyway. Um, so I'm still taking what jobs I can get, and I'm like doing my own marketing and getting some jobs for furniture assembly off platform. Um, but, um, it's still a lot slower than it's going to be this summer. I'm just looking forward to it getting busier and having steady work essentially. Uh, fresh light says, okay, got it. We'll be good to talk to them. Yeah. That's my cousin. Um, Kay says, so you have family connections with people with decent jobs. Can't they get you hired or get an interview with their companies? Well, I don't know. Um, to answer that, I don't know. Because they've never offered, and I'm not sure what jobs I would actually be able to do. Um, well, so the other thing is they're in Minnesota, which is not a place I can live. Um, I mean, I'm very sensitive to the cold anyway, but like also living in my car, I mean, I cannot go to Minnesota. Um, so, I mean, it would work probably now and through maybe October when it would get cold, but I would have it wouldn't be just like me taking a job. Like I'd have to leave for winter. Um, I know, see, I know that my little works at a bank, but with all the problems I had before with my credit and getting a job with anything to do with money, I think that would be an issue there. My grand little, he works at that event venue and it's a, it's a really famous one. And I can't, I can't think of, it might be where the Minnesota Vikings play. I mean, it's one of the really big ones. He, I'd, I'd have to look it up, but anyway, so I haven't asked about jobs, but I mean, it is possible that he could, you know, through like nepotism, get me something. He's probably not supposed to do that. Um, but I don't know that it would be worth it because I'm just thinking of what jobs they'd have available versus like what I would actually qualify for and then how much those jobs would pay. Um, if it would be worth giving up doing furniture assembly where I do make good money to take a job like that. Because I'd also have to consider that I would be taking it during my busy time for furniture assembly because I can only be in Minneapolis in the summer and that's also when I would be busy. So if I took that job, I would be foregoing furniture to take that job, which I mean, would definitely pay less. And so I don't think that I should do that. Um, that would be even if they could get that for me. Greg says, I have to fetch things for her. Glasses, pills, etc. I'm too busy working two jobs and getting back into grad school for that. Yeah, I was... Basically, all of my time was spent applying for jobs. I'd also just gone through a really bad breakup, um, which she just did not care about at all. Um, so that didn't help matters. You know, here I was, like, struggling with everything. I, and and then I got broken up with, and then I was struggling with that. And my mom is just like, well, I don't like her, so just get over it. And that's exactly what she said. Um, so she didn't even allow me to, like, talk about it or be upset about it around her. Um, and so... I was also working two jobs. I was working at Jimmy John's full time while I looked for like regular normal jobs. 
And then I had a job on Saturday that was two hours away that I'd taken just to get back in the industry. Um, I probably actually lost money every Saturday working that job. I think it cost me more to drive there than I actually made, but it was just so I would have the experience on the resume. Jennifer says, what's your view on the union? The union is really strong here in Sweden and they are trying to force themselves on Tesla. I think Elon Musk might rather take Tesla from Sweden than unionize. Yeah, I, th I think he probably would. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm very much in support of unions. I'm from West Virginia, which growing up in West Virginia was like, everyone was very pro-union. They're very anti-union now. Um, there was a big political shift in 2000 where West Virginia went from being very left-wing, like we're the birthplace of the, the American Socialist Party and um, we have had all these, like literally if you look up the, the mine wars in the 1920s, um, you know, we, we've, we've gotten to the point where our unionization efforts in West Virginia got to the point that they had to declare martial law and bring the military in to, to occupy the state. Um, it's the only state that that's ever happened. Um, the, I don't know what politically happened in 2000, but the whole state went from very far left wing to very far right wing politically. Um, just almost like in a year. And it's still like that. It's really so extremely right that, like, I mean, if you compare it to, like, any other state, it's beyond that. I, I was really surprised when I got to North Carolina because it's a, it's a red state. It's in the south. I was very surprised at how... I don't want to say more liberal than West Virginia, but like it wasn't as overtly right wing as West Virginia is. I mean, yeah, I think most of the politicians here are Republicans. And I think that most people here are like Christian evangelical conservatives, but that's not their entire personality, which is like most of the state of West Virginia. Um, and those people are very anti-union. Um, so I'm, I'm for unions. I don't know if they differ in, um, in Sweden than how they would work in the U.S. Or they might even be the same uh, union. Here it would be United Auto Workers that would have that type of facility. Um, although, how does that work in Sweden? Because, like, you guys already have health care. So... Do they already pay well? Because a lot of times in the U.S., the reason for unionization efforts, or if they're already unionized, the reason for going on strike is overpay. So, like, working in a facility like that, are they already, like, well paid? Or, like, what's the reason for, um, for the unionization efforts? Uh, TM USA says, Hey Mark, I got tied up on a call. So just join to listen back later. Okay, cool. Yeah, no sprut. Um, I mean, I actually still have a good bit amount of stuff to go over and there's still a ton of people on here. So I feel like this is going to be a pretty long stream today. Um, I think, you know, we got a little bit of a charge. My battery thing is about to die, but that means the phone should have a full charge. So, um, and I found a place where I can charge the phone tonight. So no battery worries today we can be on here for a good long time. Um, Fresh Light says, you can increase your hourly rate for furniture assembly once it gets busy. Exactly. Um, so I have to, I have had to cut my hourly rate somewhat when it's been slow just to continue getting um, stuff. I generally charge $40 an hour. Um, it, I've been charging... Well, on TaskRabbit, I've been charging 25, but then when I start solidly getting booked at 25, I'll raise it again. 
TaskRabbit's algorithm is so weird. When you lower it like that, you start getting jobs. And then when you start booking jobs, then it, it, then it keeps giving you more jobs. And then I raise my rate. But then after a week or two of my rate being raised, it'll just completely dry up. And I'll have to lower my rate again to get anything. Um, the, the market doesn't actually work like that outside of TaskRabbit. So when I've been advertising on my own and getting jobs that way, sometimes I'm doing flat fee and sometimes I'm doing um, $40 an hour. It just depends on the vibe I get from the person and what I think they'll agree to. Um, it's very rare that somebody says that I'm charging too much. I did quote somebody $150 for one item a couple days ago. And I think they thought it was too much. Um, but generally I do 80 per item. It was just the, the reviews on the item were really bad and said it was hard to assemble. So I figured it would take me a while. Um, but normally I'll do a flat fee for like $80 per item as long as it's like reasonably sized. Um, let me see here. Case says, just try for data entry or admin stuff, customer service. All companies have these. Start small, then go up from there. Yeah, so I actually do think I could do data entry. Um, and I mean, I know it's boring. I know, like, a lot of people don't like to do it. But I don't think I can do customer service anymore. I don't know what type of energy it is. It might be, like, emotional labor. Like, that's a thing. Um... I do not have any capacity for that anymore. After every th all, all the trauma and everything I went through with this girl in the court, I cannot deal with people. I can barely be nice on the surface in general, just being polite in public. Like, whatever energy that is, I do not have any of it. And I cannot spare any of it to be civil with customers. <laughs> um... So I've done that for years and that is kind of one of the bad things because I would love to work in the tech startup world again, but the easiest way to get into that is to do customer service and then work your way up from there. And I just can't, I mean, it, it's just not going to happen. Um, you know, I would I'd probably the first day I would email a customer and tell them to fuck off um, because I just literally cannot. Yeah, I think what it is, is I think I have so many problems of my own that I'm like concerned with and dealing with that I don't have room to like deal with anyone else's. And then a lot of times the problems I see people being upset with are so minuscule compared to like what I'm dealing with that I also can't really like empathize with them. Okay, let me see here. Um, Jennifer says, yes, we have healthcare and good labor laws. The union can be helpful in some situations, but mostly I feel like they're just operating in their own interests and not the workers. Um, I mean, that can be the case. I've definitely heard some people be unhappy with the unions that they have. Um, I know, for example... Uh, Kroger, which is the largest grocery store chain in America, um, they are unionized through the United Food and Commercial Workers. And I've really just been astounded at how little Kroger pays. They're a union job. And if you are even the lowest level of, um, of like, employee at Kroger... Um, like even if you just go round up the carts, you have to join the union and pay those fees to join, but yet they get paid like the same as any other grocery store. And I'm just like, I don't understand, like, how have you guys been unionized for like forever, as long as I can remember, and you get paid the same as everybody else. Really, you get paid less because you have to pay the union fees out of your, out of your pay. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, 
Jennifer says, how many hours per week do you work? So that is like, that is like the hardest question to answer because it does change every week. And it depends on what you consider work. Um, so like in, if you're looking at TaskRabbit and furniture assembly, which is what I call just doing any furniture assembly outside of TaskRabbit. If you're looking at that, um, you can look at the hours that I bill uh, per week, but then the question would be like, okay, well, do you consider driving to the job site and back work? And then do you consider, you know, like when I get a request and I have to research that product, is that work? And do I, um, um, do I have to, like, do I have to count my marketing efforts? Because that takes a long time, too. That would be, like, posting ads, responding to people, giving quotes, that kind of stuff. So I really don't know how to answer that question. Um, I, my best estimate is that, I, is that between TaskRabbit, Furniture Assembly, Instacart, and DoorDash, I work between 40 and 60 hours a week. Um, but see, like on the DoorDash side, it's also like almost all the orders are terrible. Like I, I'll tell you guys this. Um, I was at, um, I got really upset last night. I told you guys that DoorDash is pretty much dead. I only get an, an occasional, um, an occasional acceptable order here and there. Um, but Friday night I got a few good orders. It wasn't like incredible, but I spent three or four hours sitting around waiting for orders, turned most of them down, but I ended up taking a few acceptable ones and I made like $40 for the evening. Um, but then yesterday it would being Saturday should have been a busy day. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna basically, I don't know. I just thought that I would make some money last night and it was so frustrating because I didn't like I was on Instacart and DoorDash both for the entire evening from like 5 PM to midnight. And there was only one acceptable order the entire time. It was a lot of just sitting there, like, just dead the whole time. Like, not getting any orders at all. And then when I would get the occasional offer, it would just be something that I would actually lose money on. So, I literally just... I don't know. There was just nothing that I could do. Um, so, I made... I got so frustrated and upset last night. I ended up... Um, I was so stressed that I got a headache, which I don't think that's actually happened from stress before. Um, but anyway, I got a pretty bad headache. Um, and I ended up just going to bed at like midnight last night because that's way early for me, but I'm just like, it just, you know, it, it sucks. Um, and it was a really bad night and I was stressed about money and everything. And <sighs> You know, I do, I, the headache went away overnight, and, um, but as far as how many hours I work, it's really hard to say, because a lot of the, a lot of the hours are like yesterday, um, where I'll literally sit in my car for hours and not make any money from it. So, it's kind of like, you know, do you, do you consider that work? Um... Let me see here. Uh, Jennifer says, I feel you on customer service. So done with that. Yeah. Um, I know it's not popular to say that, but I do. I agree with you. Kay says, I think you will do okay in customer service. Think about how many questions you just answered in an hour. Um, sure. Customers are not as nice as your subscribers, but every job has some drawbacks. I mean, I could do it until I get fired. 
it's definitely an inevitability that I would get fired. <laughs> um, because I, I just, I can't. Um, and I do also think that now that I'm like diagnosed with PTSD, I think that's part of it is like the way that I react to stuff. Um, like if somebody came at me and was like, you know, really rude or whatever, like, I don't think that I would be able to just like stand down. Um, I found that a lot where like a lot of people would be able to brush stuff off. I'm not able to do that anymore. So, um, okay. Francis says, are you gay or man? Well, not gay, but I don't, those things aren't a dichotomy, so I don't know how to answer that. And Jennifer is questioning that. Case says we need moderators. We do need moderators. Um, so after the weird stream that we had at the end of February, um, I was asking people if they wanted to be mods, and um, nobody has offered to do so. Um, the only... Um, the only person actually who offered was the person who offered in the stream today but since I haven't seen them interact with the channel before I'm not comfortable just letting anybody be a mod um, it would have to be somebody that's you know that I I recognize their name they've been around for a while and I remember that you know they've been reasonable and respectful um, in like their comments and stuff um, so let me see Uh, Daryl says, I don't want to be rude, but you got to shave. Yeah, I do need to shave, but are you talking about like actual stubble or this? Because this is not that bad. That's like, oh, I don't know, four or five days of stubble. See, the main thing is I can't keep myself 100% like totally fully groomed because, you know, I am homeless. So um, things as far as like, hygiene and stuff are not nearly as easy for me and it's a lot more time consuming for me um than it is for most people so um so it's like i mean i'm gonna get my hair cut i was talking about that i'm gonna get my hair cut when i get back to ohio um that's gonna be about another oh, five six weeks from now so yeah it's gonna be way too long um but that'll be taken care of when i'm back there the shaving thing is an issue because I have to, um, I have to find a location to shave. Um, I have, um, basically I've found a, a temporary solution because I don't have my, um, I don't have my co-working space anymore. I explained that to you guys in the last stream and that's a, uh, like a whole long story. Um, but I'm going to get that back when I get to Ohio. Um, what I'm going to do though is, um, what I'm going to do is, um, and what I've been doing is there's a college that I go to sometimes just to like use the Wi-Fi and charge my phone and stuff. Um, they have the gender neutral bathrooms that are like single user. And, um, the last two or three times that I've shaved, I've gone there. So I really should, honestly, I should shave every two or three days as far as like looking completely kempt. Um, but I've been shaving about every week. Um, and it's really just a, it's a time issue and it's getting a place to shave and it's like, and that, that's actually like, I'm not offended by you saying that. Cause I wanted to, um, May 5th of this year will be a year since I've been like living in my car ever since my, my roommate tried to stab me and all that. Um, so I'm going to make a video basically about my year being homeless and like 
what it's been like. And that's actually one of the main points is that hygiene is the most difficult thing. Um, just because you got to find the facilities and, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of an issue when you don't have a facility. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, it does just take a lot more effort. Like just to give you an example, every morning, um, you know, I can't just wake up and walk across the hallway and take a shower. Like I have to actually pack my bag, drive to the gym, um, you know, deal with other people, take a shower there, get ready around other people, um, and then drive, you know, leave and go wherever I'm going. So there's just like a lot more time and labor into everything that I have to do, uh, like as far as hygiene. So that's what all is going on with that. Um, give me a minute here. I'm going to try to cop, get these comments. Um, Francis, um, I think I was talking about, I was answering Jennifer's question, I'm pretty sure. So that's, that's basically all I'm doing. I've got a few things still to announce, but like mainly I'm just uh, answering people's questions. Um, yeah, I mean, Daryl, I, I would, I would definitely rather be a little more put together. It's just kind of, uh, I'm doing the best I can to be like the minimal, minimally acceptable looking to be around people. Um, but it takes a lot of, of time and effort, um, a lot more so to, than most people to get there. Um, yeah, in case of saying I'll shave soon, I'm probably going to shave tomorrow, I think. Um, I'm not booked for work tomorrow, so I'll probably go to the college tomorrow and shave. Um, most likely, yeah. Uh, John Doe says, um, you'll be a mod. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm totally fine with that because I think that you've been here quite a bit. Um, let me... I don't think I can do that from the live chat. Let me see here, though. Oh, yes, actually, I can. Uh, okay, I'm just going to put you as a standard moderator. And I don't know if that gives you any kind of notification, but it just says that you're a mod now. So we'll see how that works out. Um, Jennifer says, yeah. Um, okay. I'm just reading through this, this conversation here with Daryl. And he does say just the stubble. Yeah, and that, that's the part I'm taking care of. The, I explained about the sideburns. Those are going away when I get my hair cut. Uh, Kay says, I think if you're going for interview or dating, then start shaving. Not as important if you are not around people anyway. Yeah. Um, I would like to not have, um, I would like to not have a, uh, job where I have to shave. I mean, you know, it's not that I don't generally like when I'm housed that I don't like keep myself up. Okay. But, um, you know, like for example, working at a tech startup, um, there's no uniform. You wear whatever you want. Right. And, um, I've worked a lot of jobs where you have to dress a certain way, which is like a certain, even if it's not a uni uniform, it's like a certain type of clothing that you wouldn't wear anywhere else. And you have to spend all that money on that. Plus you got to wear, you got to have like regular clothes. Well, I don't want to spend the extra money to have two different wardrobes. So like, I don't want to have to dress a different way for work. So whatever job I get, I want to be able to wear like normal clothes. And it would be the same way with shaving. Um, like when I worked at Candid, for example, not only did they not care if I shaved or not, but um, a group of us did No Shave November. This is back in 2019. And I like grew a full beard. Um, 
and that was encouraged. Like even our, our general manager, like the guy who ran our entire location participated in that. And, um, you know, he's like a C level executive making like half a million a year. And he just did it for fun with us. Like, um, it just depends on the type of place you're working. So the type of places that I would be looking at working would not be places that would like care about that kind of thing. Uh, Case says, I think shower is more important than shaving. How's your showering game? I think gyms have paid shower. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I do shower most days. Uh, now, sometimes on, if I'm running extremely late for work, I'll just, I don't even have my hat here. I, I wear my old Jimmy John's hat because it's literally the only hat I have. Um, but, like, I will, um, I'll just throw the hat on because, like, generally... I am not, um, I don't know, how do I say this? The way my hair is, I'm not one of those guys that can just roll out of bed and look fine. My hair looks crazy. Um, like, I look like I've been homeless for 10 years um, every morning just because of the way my hair is. I don't know what's going on. But, um... So generally I look fine though, if I just throw the hat on and, um, I do that a lot. Um, generally on my days off, I will not shower because that cuts like a couple hours off where I can go do something else. Um, and occasionally when I'm running, running late for a job, um, you know, maybe I get up and I'll go get breakfast and then I'll realize it's going to be really tight to get a shower in. Then I won't. Um, and I'll just wear a hat. But it's always, it's always to cover up my hair. That's the whole problem. Um, so most days I shower. And I have a local laundromat here where I go and I do laundry. Um, so I'm like up on that. I've got like a little set up I got like a little area in the back where I keep my clean clothes um it I mean it's organized in the sense that I know where everything is I'm not sure it would look organized to most people just you know, I have to use every bit of space in here um let me see here okay so first lady of Dade says um oh and uh before I actually get to First Lady of Dade's comment, I'm going to... I forgot to answer half a case's question. Um, so gyms aren't exactly paid showers in the sense that, like, you don't go in and pay for the shower. You just pay for the gym membership, and then you can take a shower there. Um, now, there are some truck stops around here, and I do occasionally go to a truck stop. Um, and you can pay to take a shower there, but it's $18 each time. And, um, there's not technically a limit on the amount of time you can stay in there, but like, they're usually pretty busy. So they want you to kind of hurry up. Um, yeah. So I, I try to save that money and just do whatever I need to do with the college instead. Let me see here. Okay, so John says he's refreshing. It looks like he took an action here. So he is he is a moderator now. Um, yeah, that's fine, Case. I'll go ahead and make you a mod. Um, let's see, add as moderator. Just going to put you as a standard as well. If we get into a situation later on, like, you know, like the channel's huge and we have like hundreds of people on here i can actually up upgrade you guys to um, managing moderators and that gives you some more like permissions to do stuff but um so case you are now also a mod jennifer says um what was it like working at jimmy john's um so i actually have a video about that on the channel 
Um, that actually might be the title of the video. It's been a long time since I made it. Eight years ago, I think. Um, but I think it's actually called What It's Like Working at Jimmy John's. Um, and I go into a lot of detail on it, but essentially I was just a driver. I, I just did delivery. And the only time I made sandwiches was either for myself or, um, and let me think here, um, either for myself or occasionally from one of the other crew members. But like, I was not trained on making sandwiches and they didn't make me memorize the menu. Uh, they are supposed to do that for everybody, but, um, yeah, I just did uh, driving and it was like, it was okay. I mean, I made barely any money. Um, I, it, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. Um, yeah, it was just okay. I mean, I, I really just did it because I, I did it when I was living with my mom and she lives in the middle of nowhere. I had to drive 20 miles into town. I would work there for, they don't only have you work like a two or three hour shift. And then, um, yeah, I'd make enough money basically to get myself lunch out that day. Um, and I think I was making enough to cover my bills, like my student loan payments, but like really not much. Um, and that's how I'd end it. I mean, really, and I am so bummed guys. Okay. So after working at Jimmy John's, I started eating at Jimmy John's more because I was more familiar with everything. And just recently they did away with the Dijon and it's literally not edible without the Dijon. So, I've been wanting Jimmy John's. I haven't had it for a long time. And I'm literally at the point where I'm going to be the old dude in the 90s commercial with the bottle of Grey Poupon in my car. Um, because I'm going to have to get it to manually put it on my sandwich. My order at Jimmy John's, if you guys ever need to know. Um, um, but like, if you guys ever need to know what my order is, it is a number eight, which is the Billy Club. No lettuce, tomato, or mayo. That usually comes on it, so we take that off. Um, add Jimmy Peppers, do the Dijon Extra, and cut it in half. So, uh, yeah. And then if, if, I mean, that's all I need to eat. Like, honestly, that's a lot of food. But sometimes I also get the salt and vinegar chips to just to take with me and I'll eat them later. Uh, Kay says, I make only about $16 when I first watched your stream two years ago. Now I make double that. I had some cancer scares, but taken care of free. All this is possible because I am in Canada. So that's my only advice. Dating wise, I think it is the same here. Bad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, your <laughs> advice to move to Canada. I mean, that's, I'm not opposed to moving to Canada, honestly. Um, I know you guys have problems up there too, but it just seems like there's a lot less drama up there. Um, it's almost weird to me, like when I am on like YouTube or something and I see Canadians that are like so unhappy with something that's going on up there. It's like, I can't even relate to it because like, it's just so, so much less. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I'm saying it's like so much less than the problems that we deal with down here. Um, I mean, I, I would be coming from the U S I would be so grateful to have, uh, healthcare. Um, now one thing that I, I mean, operating as a business in Canada, I think is a little more difficult. Um, so that is a challenge, but, um, just, I'm totally open to moving. I mean, I need to get myself obviously a little more financially and mentally stable, um, which I'm hoping to achieve a lot of that this year, um, after I get back to Ohio, but 
yeah, I'm, I'm totally willing to move somewhere else. The only thing that I'm not thrilled about with Canada is the whole cold thing. So. Let me see. Uh, John Doe, okay, so cool, yeah, um, so now we've got two mods, um, let me ask Jennifer, I don't know if she's still on here, um, Case is saying to add Jennifer, um, as a mod, so, Jennifer, you're still here, let me know if you want that, um, what is going on here? Oh, okay. Jennifer, yeah, um, that's cool. Let me go ahead and make you a mod. I mean, don't feel obligated to be here every time, but just, uh, especially because I just sometimes am planning these last minute. But yeah, I trust you to, to be cool with everything. Okay, so the Popcorn family made kind of a long comment here, and I think I'll have to take a little while to respond to it. Um, so let me see here. She says, well, actually, I don't know who from the popcorn family is talking, so I guess I shouldn't use pronouns. But I'm on the outside looking in, but I think the reason you lost your mom and friends is because they saw what I saw in your ex-girlfriend. From what you told us, the relationship seemed very one-sided. Um, the girl, but minimal effort when it came to your relationship, vacations, moving, and etc., I felt like you liked her way more than she liked you, and she would give you just enough attention to keep you. Well, I don't know. See, it's hard for me to tell if she liked, or like if I liked her more than she liked me. Um, it's like, I would think if that was the case, that like, she just wouldn't really be that involved with me but like when you have but like you know she would disappear right but she would always come back not after me reaching out to her but like on her own she would come back every time we would break up which was usually her doing it she would be the one that would come back and want to be dating again right um she was the one that put us in a relationship on Facebook without even asking me. She was the one that brought up the idea of moving in together. She was the one that wanted me to get a job so that she, so I could pay for living and stuff um, while she went back to school. Um, you know, and I did, I don't even know if I've talked about this on this channel, but um, I, I proposed to her in December of 2019 and I mean she said yes and this isn't going to make any sense right now because I'm not giving you any context but I did it in a super casual way and it was like a couple months later I realized she was taking it like much much more seriously than how I had proposed it um and I don't know like she has, she has a lot of issues. She has commitment issues. She has problems with feelings. Um, and I do, I do agree with you about it being one-sided. Like I, I think that I definitely put in most of the effort, but that is not at all to say that she didn't put in any. And I think that if she wasn't interested, that she wouldn't have kept continuing it. You know, even if it's like what you're saying where, you know, she just gave me enough attention to keep me around, you know, there was a reason she was doing that. Um, for whatever reason it was, she wanted me, you know, she wanted me in her life and she wanted me to committed to her. Um, so I don't really know. Um, but but to answer your question, I know, f I know for a fact that it's not why I lost my mom. Um, now you said, you said friends and all those people that might, might well be the case. Maybe they just, you know, never mentioned it to me. 
It seems more to me like it's that they were annoyed by me being upset all the time by, you know, whatever the latest thing was that she did to upset me. And then like, I was just a mess and intolerable to be around because I was upset, which I could, I could understand. Um, but like, that might be true of the friends and stuff. I think, in fact, I know with my mom though, that's not the case. The problem with my mom, and you are right that the re that the final straw about my mom was about the girl. Um, but that was because my mom consistently over the years would not respect the decisions that I was making in my relationship and would try to manipulate and gaslight me to turn me against the girl. And she would... Um, she kept trying to interfere, um, with my relationship and, um, that's just not okay. Um, it's just, it's just not okay. I mean, even if there was some element of good intention there on my mom's part, what she actually did is not okay. And, um, that was actually the final thing when my mom finally hung up on me the final time, like a year and a half ago, um, what it was about was long backstory. My, my ex basically planned behind my back to go off to college after she had told me to go take that job to support her. And, um, I mean, she eventually told me like a couple months later, but, um, I kind of felt betrayed because I was like, well, what the hell you asked me to like do all this for you. And I went out and I made it happen. And then you went and did this behind my back and got enrolled in school and got into this program and everything. And she's like, well, don't worry about it. I got waitlisted, so I'm not going anyway. Um, but it turns out like a year later, they called her off the waitlist. This is after we broke up and she did go. Um, and my mom had seen her name published in the paper as a scholarship recipient. And so my mom called me and told me about it. And it's obviously like a really sensitive subject. Um, and I did not know that she'd gone back to school. And so my mom called me and was just like, oh yeah, she got us like a full scholarship for this. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And, and my mom got really indignant too. And, you know, finally she just said like, well, if you can talk about her, like, I should be able to talk about her. I'm like, she's my girlfriend. I should be able to talk about her. Yes, that doesn't entitle you to talk about her. And, like, you know this is such a su touchy subject. I don't think necessarily my mom knew that the going back to school was a touchy subject. But she knew it was a very touchy subject about my ex. Um, and she just, like, brought it up. She just, like, sprung that on me. Anyhow. And, I mean, maybe it's the trauma. Maybe it's, I, I don't know. I just was not ready for that. And it really upset me. And my mom, you know, basically with her saying that was just like, well, if you can talk about her, I can talk about her. And I was like, well, first of all, I wasn't even talking about her. Second of all, it's my relationship that doesn't give you the right to, to bring that up. And you, you have to be like somewhat conscious of like, if you bring something up, if it's going to upset me and she just doesn't care about that at all. Um, so she kind of did that. And I, I, I said, and then she kind of went off on this tangent about how it was my fault that she's in the nursing home, which it's not. I literally fought for years with that court and then her lawyer and this, this is like from 2016 to 2018, I was in this huge battle trying to keep my mom out of the nursing home and then trying to get her out. And she had the audacity because I got mad at her for being insensitive to me. She then started blaming me for her being in the nursing home. And then, and, and then I, I told her that what I just said, I was like, I fought for years to keep you out of there. Um, and then she said something else about my ex. And I said, well, that's one of the things she's most upset about is you interfering in our relationship and trying to get me to break up with her. I was like, but I don't think that we'd be having the problems we have because she's still to this day, and I will say, even in her deposition, the last time that I sat down with her back in November, she's still mad 
about my mom interfering in our relationship. Even though she wants nothing to do with me, that still upsets her. And so I said to my mom, I'm like, I don't think I'd have these problems with my relationship if you hadn't have gotten involved. And that was when she hung up on me. And I've never heard from her again. So, yeah. So that's what's going on with that. So I don't think it was... And, and there's more of a backstory to that. But essentially, before the girl was doing anything bad, even in like... In the first year that I knew her, my mom was trying to break us up. And it's also not the first girl that my mom has done this with. Um, there was a girl that I dated in high school that my mom also didn't like. And she did all kinds of stuff to try to break us up. And it's just not okay. Okay. Um... Okay, so Jennifer, you're added. Um, Case says, operating as a business here, you would be a sole proprietor. It is the same as getting taxed for extra income. If you want to spend more money to get corporation status, you can get deduction. So what I was referring to is um, maybe it's just U.S. businesses based in Canada. Or, I mean, U.S.-based businesses operating in Canada. But I was seeing something that said, like, you had to be sponsored by... If you wanted to be an independent contractor working in Canada, that you had to be sponsored by a, um, like a, a Canadian corporation or something like that. Um, I, it's really confusing and I didn't actually look that far into it. Um, Jennifer says, thanks for the promotion. Um, what's your monthly take home pay on average? I, I don't know. Um, honestly, like this is actually, I know we've been on here forever, but there was more I, I wanted to talk about. This was kind of going to be part of it, but I actually did not, um, I did not realize how little money I'm earning, um, until I went back and you guys know I haven't been able to categorize all my stuff since like April of 22 when all this court stuff started. Um, um, so basically what happened though was I stopped categorizing my transactions because of all the court stuff and then um, starting like I don't know, last fall, I started, uh, just doing the income cause I had a little more time and then looking at my income so far this year, cause mint has now shut down as of yesterday, but as of Friday, I think it was, I was still categorizing all my income for this year and looking at it, I've only made like $5,000 this year, like so far that's January, February, March. So I'm going to say maybe by the end of the month, it'll be closer to 6,000, but that means that I'm only making $24,000 for like the entire year. And, um, so I, I didn't, I don't know. So I, I guess I just didn't, um, realize like how little I'm actually making. And a lot of last year was like taking time off from working in order to work on lawsuit stuff. That's not really been an issue this year. There were only a couple days in January I had to do that. Um, but nothing else after that. Um, but I was just amazed to think like, oh my God, like I'm only making $24,000 this year. Now, it will actually go up because, like, obviously, I'm, I'm taking January, February, and March, which are very slow seasons, and then quadrupling that to show, to project what it would be for the whole year. And that doesn't account for the busy season in the summer. Um, but still, I'm really shocked at how little I actually make. Um, so I would say definitely under $2,000 every month. Um, now, of course, I don't have rent or utilities, so that's 
the biggest expense for most people. Um, so I guess I really don't need to be making as much as I should be making, if that makes sense. Jennifer says, I feel shame for trying to be supporting in that relationship when everybody else saw that it was not healthy. Um, no, I, I don't want you to feel, I don't want you to feel that way. Cause I, I really appreciate that you were, um, supportive cause like a lot of people weren't. And honestly, I don't know what the problem was in the relationship. I don't even know if there is a singular problem or if it was a bunch of things, but like, I really loved her and I, I really was doing everything that I thought was right. And then that last year, 2021, she just, she was just doing everything wrong. I mean, the way that she was treating me and I, it was a new issue and I, I, you know, if it had been going on for years, I probably would have figured out what was going on and like, I would have figured out what I needed to do about it, whether that be leave or, or what, but it was new and I just hadn't had a time to figure out what was going on. Um, so, I mean, I'm glad that you were there to support it because a lot of other, other people weren't being in the comments. And at the time I had no idea that it was abusive. I had no idea like that. I was really actually being treated badly. Um, those concepts were just like, not even in my mind. And I mean, I'm glad that you supported me in what I wanted to do, which was, you know, I wanted to ride out all the problems I was having and, and I wanted to fix things, you know, I wanted to be good to her. And, um, so I don't want you to blame yourself because I mean, you, you came from a good place doing it and it was what I needed at the time with everything that I was going through. I definitely did not need people telling me like this girl sucks. Like, cause that was, I was getting a lot of that. And, um, and I, I kind of was always just like, Oh my God, well, like, you know, I kind of understand it. Like there's so much backstory and there's so much stuff I can't put out here, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to say this because withhold your judgment of yourself. Okay. I, I'm asking you not to feel bad, but at least if you don't want to do that, at least withhold the judgment because I'm, I'm just going to kind of announce it right now. I've, I've been thinking about it. Um, I was going to make a video when I dropped the lawsuit, just basically saying I dropped the lawsuit. Here's why I dropped it. And here's some more info on the stuff that I couldn't really talk about while it was on going case. Um, I was going to make that video. And then after the lawsuit, um, Hey, like after it dropped and I got busy with trying to get caught up on things, I didn't end up making it, but I sort of started storyboarding it in my head of like, okay, where am I going to start? This is a 12 year long relationship. Like, um, how am I even going to start explaining this? And I was trying to figure, do I start at the beginning? Do I start right when I dropped the lawsuit? Like, how do I start doing this? And every which way that I figured I could tell the story every way I did that I ended up having to jump back and explain a bunch of other stuff because there's backstory to everything and this is so long and convoluted and dramatic and all of these things so um I don't know if you guys know this um but there's a dude named Nate Petrosky he's really famous on TikTok but even on YouTube I think he has like a million subscribers uh, he lives not far from where all this happened in West Virginia, um, like two counties over. And he just realized he, he just recently, like within the last month, he came out with a series of videos telling about his story. And there was a lot of 
his story, especially the part regarding his wife and that relationship and their divorce, that really is so similar to, to mine. And so I decided I'm going to put this out there. Um, probably June, July, somewhere around there is when I'll start filming it. And it's going to be in segments. So not like, not like a 10 hour long video, but it, it'll be in shorter segments that I release in batches. I'm going to start telling the story of the relationship and all the things that happened, including that one last terrible year. And then I'll be able to detail all the court stuff and all the stuff that I couldn't tell you guys. Um, and because basically what it was going to be is at the end of the video where I, uh, the video I was going to make saying I dropped the lawsuit, I was going to say, I am going to find some way to tell my story. Um, you know, I've never been able to, to tell it. Um, and I, I need that. Um, but I also think that you guys are, would be interested because it's like a really ridiculous story. Um, but also I think for those who endured the like two years now that I've basically been missing from the channel and not able to make content because of this, like it, you guys deserve to know what happened. And I think you'll understand once I say it, um, I, I think you'll see why it's impact, it's impacted me as strongly as it has. Um, so just know that that's coming. Um, I'm going to chop it up into segments and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, give me a little more time to process things. Let me get back to Ohio. But when I start filming again, I'm going to have a very long, probably 30, 40, 50 part series, um, of the entire backstory. And you guys will understand more, but also you can just look at it as entertainment because it is, it is a very wild story from start to finish. Um, and while doing that, I also, I get to finally tell my story and I guess I get some candid opinions. I'll, I'll see, you know, how you guys react to it and see what you guys think. Yeah. If I was right or if I was wrong. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll eventually make that stuff public. Okay. I'm scrolling up here. I'm going to get back to the comments. Um, so yeah, Jennifer, the point of that is please don't feel bad about that. Popcorn Family says, I'm a mom, so I may be biased, but it's just wild how you can forgive the girl many times and take her back, but you still hold a grudge with your mom. I don't mean to overstep in your business, but I would hate for you to regret not spending your mom's last years with her due to another girl who isn't even in your life anymore. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I struggle with. Um, as far as... I mean, that's like why I say like t today's my mom's birthday and I, oh, hey, wow. Thank you, Jennifer. I don't know. I just got that notification. Thank you for the super chat. 200 uh, Swedish kroner. I, I don't know what that is US. I'll have to calculate that. But thank that's a lot, I think. So thank you for that. Um, I will... Um, I don't know if you put a comment with that. If so, I will, I will respond to it. Um, but I will, um, if you do have a question with that, I'll get back to that. Um, when I finished answering the popcorn family here. Um, so yeah, so the popcorn family, um, that is like why I said, like, I feel so bad today because it's like my mom's birthday and I would normally want to call her and, but the thing is, aside from the whole girl issue, is I've told my mom multiple times not to hang up on me. 
I mean, I, I think that's a pretty reasonable thing. And um, she just does it anyway because she knows it upsets me. And um, I had told her several years ago um, that if I was, you know, I was like, you have to stop hanging up on me. And I told, I finally told her, I was like, if you hang up on me again, I'm never talking to you again. And she cried. Um, but then, you know, and she did stop. She did stop. But see, a lot of times my mom calls me and she kind of takes out all of her frustration on me. Um, and I think it's because she's locked up in the nursing home and she doesn't want to be there. She, you know, doesn't have very many people to take it out on. But, like, I end up getting yelled at and her being mean to me and things like that. And um, I, obviously, with what I've been going through the last two years, I am in no place to have anybody be doing that to me. And, you know, when I set that boundary with her about that, I'm not good at setting boundaries or keeping them. But I needed to do that. Um, I, um, I had said it. I hoped that I never had to enforce it. And then she did it again. You know, that last time that I talked about earlier. She did it again. And um, the reason it came to that is because she had been so insensitive about just like throwing that in my face about my ex, um, which she knows not to do, but it's just, it comes from a lack of care. Like my mom just does not seem to care about me. And it, it came from, you know, and what she said about it was basically like, well, it, it was from her desire to be able to talk about it when she wants to, regardless of whether it upsets me. Um, and that's why she brought it up. And my mom has said some really, really, really horrible things. Not just, I mean, they were about the girl. But the way that she says them is not as if she's being protective of me or like something like that. She says them in a way that hurts me too. I can't repeat what she has said on the channel because it's actually that bad like it well i mean the video would be de demonetized but like also i don't really want to repeat them because they're actually that bad but like she'll say something just horrible about the girl that also really upsets me um and she just doesn't care because if you guys remember earlier in the stream when I was living with her, that's when I went through the, the big 2015 breakup with the girl. And, um, my mom was just like, I don't like her. So you just get over it. Like I wasn't allowed to talk about it. I wasn't allowed to be upset about it. Um, you know, it, it's, my mom is not innocent in this and I've really struggled with this boundary, but back when I was still seeing the therapist before my insurance ran out, I've talked to her about this and she sees why I'm struggling with it, but she did agree with me that I need to keep the boundary because if I contact my mom after this, you know, if I reach out after I said, I'm not going to talk to you if you do this, well, um, that's just going to make her think that she can just keep doing stuff and that I'm never going to hold any boundaries. So it's just something I'm really struggling with. Um, and I don't think that I should be put in a place where I have to set boundaries like that with my own mother. Um, it's hard enough for me to do, but I just don't feel like I should encounter that situation uh, to begin with. Now, there was more to your question, so I'm going to go back and see. Um, you are right, um, and I have noticed that myself. 
I'm much more willing to forgive the girl than I am my mom. And I don't know why. Um, you know, my mom has done a lot of bad to me in my life as well. But um, if we look at just what she's done with this relationship, like there's also quite a few bad things she's done. And you're right, like I have been pretty firm that I'm just like, no, no, this is not okay. Um, I'm not going to allow this. But you're right, with the girl, I forgive her over and over and over and over again. And that's not to say that I haven't with my mom, because there definitely have been boundaries that I have not enforced after I tried to set them. I don't know the answer to why that is. Um, I've thought about it a lot myself, and I just don't know. Um, and then... Um, Oh, wait, I scrolled up too far. And, yeah, what you're saying about, like, missing the last years of my mom's life, like, that's something that I think about a lot. Because I don't want to be in that situation where I have that regret. Because I already have that regret about my grandpa. Because I, I missed, like, the last two years of his life because of the girl. Because I was just, I was so upset with the stuff that she put me through that I could not visit him in the nursing home anymore. Um, I, I was just too, there was too much going on with me emotionally. Um, and then I missed out with that time with him. But then with my mom, it's like I can't, I don't know, um, it's more complicated than it was with my grandpa because you're right, like the girl's not in my life anymore. But that doesn't make what my mom did okay. And if it's not this girl, it'll be the next girl. And if it's not this like relationship issue it'll be something else where my mom just you know wants to treat me badly um but okay so yeah, I, don't, I don't know I could probably ramble on about that forever but I don't really know if I have a definitive response to it um case says i'm in a loving family so i understand why the popcorn family would say that my mother and father supported me for most of my life i would never put any girlfriend before my parent um with that said i think mark is not in a family like that so he thinks differently i think a lot of people are like that from co-workers where i work i manage a hotel I remember one of the clients got a letter delivered to him. It was news that his parents died, and he just told me good riddance. Some people are brought up in bad families. Yeah, I am... Um, I wouldn't say that I put the girlfriend before my parent or my family. When I make that series of videos, you guys will understand this more, but there was an incident that happened back in 2013 with my girlfriend, which being this girl, um, and my mom, where my mom did something so terrible against her, and I fell for it. I had no idea that I could not trust my own mother on this. Um... And it took me a while to realize what my mom had done, that she'd manipulated me. Um, but I promised the girl after that, that after s seeing what my mom did in order to break up my relationship, that I, and keep in mind, the girl was not at all problematic at this point. We'd only been together like six to nine months, and she was like the sweetest girl ever. Things changed later. But um, my mom did not have a reason not to like her. But I... I 
I felt so violated by my mom and I told the girl, I was like, I will always choose you over her. Now that I know that she's like this and that she would do that to me, I will always put you first. And I think, and I did. Um, and I think she believed me. Um, I think she questioned it sometimes, but, um, I know that that is one of the things that hurt her the most, this whole relationship, is that my mom did that and that I fell for it. And even every time we've gone to court, even in her deposition, she wants absolutely nothing to do with me, but she still brings it up. She's so hurt that my mom would do that to her that... I mean, even when she's arguing she wants nothing to do with me, she's so hurt that my mom intervened in our relationship before. And, I mean, she's not wrong. Um, so, it was a pretty major thing. Um, I just can't get into it exactly in this video. Um, so that's why I put my girlfriend before my parent, I guess, is my answer to that. Um... Yeah, and then she said, with that said, I, th I, I think Mark is not in a family like that, um, so he thinks differently, I think. Um, yeah, and I mean, like, my family actually seemed to be pretty functional up until about the time I was in first grade, and my parents got divorced. It wasn't my parents' divorce that really messed things up, it was... Um, I, well, I don't, I don't actually even really know, um, what it was. It's just, that was when I was in first grade. I would say when I was about in ninth grade, freshman year of high school, that's actually when things kind of went completely off the rails, just like across the board with all of my family. Um, but like, no, I, my family is not normal. That's for sure. And, um, so yeah, it's probably right to say that I think of things differently. Um, and I really wish that I had a good family. And quite honestly, that's something that I look for somebody when I'm dating as well, is for them to have a good family. Because, I mean, I know it's by marriage, but I would like to be a part of that. Um, and that is one thing that I thought or was told that the girl had when we started seeing each other, um, seems like I might've been lied to about that, but, um, but yeah, I, I thought that's what it was going into it. First lady of date says, I understand case. I didn't see it that way. He says it's per perfectly understandable for all the women in live stream. Remember everyone hating on your ex and all that Amber Heard trials. It must have made all the ladies in the cat chat feel uncomfortable. Just know that no one is pointing fingers at you, which is like the 1%. We were talking about the 99%. I'm, I, I'm not sure if you're talking directly to me here or if you're talking to everybody in the chat, but um, it, I'm going to assume you're talking to me. Um, I think you're right. There were women in the live stream that were uncomfortable. Um, I remember somebody actually saying, like, if this is what we're going to be talking about, like, I'm leaving. And, um, I don't think that's entirely fair because, like, I think that came from a place of, like, the whole thing of, like, you know, women are always telling the truth when they make accusations. And so, therefore, you have to be bad. Um, and that just wasn't the case here. Um, the accusations... I was fighting were not true and um yeah so I think I got kind of unfairly assumed that they were true and you're right the Amber Heard trial was going on exactly at the same time that I was in court um so that was also a like big in like the public mind at the time and then well yeah Everyone was hating on my ex, so, um, yeah. 
And that, to be clear, that's not something that I'm going to be doing. When I make this series of videos, this is not a, you know, like a rant about my ex. Um, if anything, I'm probably going to be defending her more than you guys would really want me to do. Um, but I am actually going to, for the first time, actually tell you guys what happened. Um, and kind of see what opinions you have, you know... And that's part of why I'm breaking it up into different segments, because then like some of the questions that came up in the first segment, I can address in the second segment kind of thing. Um, but yeah, if you are talking to me, thank you that no one is pointing fingers at me because I definitely, definitely feel that that's not the case. I hope you're right. Um, but I feel like everyone has pointed the finger at me. Um, because in my experience, whether it be the court system or the agencies I went to to try to get help or literally just anyone, you know, everybody just automatically looked at me and was like, you're the abuser. I mean, some of them just told me that directly. And so not only did I go through what I went through, but then everybody's telling me that either that didn't happen and I am lying and that's actually what I did to her or they're telling me that like, well, I just don't believe you or they fight against me to keep me from telling my story. Um, I just feel like there's really not anybody out there that, um, that believed me. And, um, it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys remember or if you did this, but if you had like an intro to psych class, there was this famous study called the line study and every member of the study was in on it, except for the one guy who was the subject. So I think the premise of it was like, there were, they would show these different lines and you'd have to say if all the lines were the same or if. Like, some of them were different. And the guy was like, oh, no, like, th this one's different. And then every other person disagreed with him. They're like, no, it's not. It's the same. And he looked at it. He's like, no, it, it's different. How are you guys seeing this as the same? And anyway, so it was basically about conformity and how when, like, every single other person around you is telling you the opposite of what your perception is. And then like that cognitive dissonance that's created um, and like struggling with that. My point is basically I was the only person in the room who knew that I was not the abuser and who knew that the things she was saying were not true. Um, and it has been a very hard struggle over the last two years now um, to keep advocating for myself. Um, let me see here. Uh, Popcorn Family says, maybe I don't know enough of Mark's story to have an opinion, but I'm just seeing everything with a maternal lens. But yeah, I mean, I see that. I see why you would. Um, Jennifer said, you said you were upset last night, but I missed why. Kay says, I think he lost profit. I mean, it is technically, I mean, yeah, it's true that I lost profit because basically I just sat in the car for, for hours getting frustrated because I wasn't making any money. Um, but, you know, I didn't have any furniture assembly tasks yesterday. I had had one Friday and then Friday night I got a pretty good, I mean, fairly decent, just made like $40, I think on DoorDash. So I thought, okay, cool. Like it's going to be fairly busy this weekend. So I go out on Saturday. I have most of the day set aside to go work. Um, and since I didn't have any furniture assembly, I was going to do DoorDash. Well, it, I just wasn't getting any orders. And I was just sitting there 
I was getting frustrated. And then when I would get orders, I, they were like terrible. They, I would have lost money taking them. Um, and so I couldn't take them. And then I finally got an Instacart order. I ended up, I went to the store, but then I dropped it. I dropped the order because, um, there were some issues with getting the right products. Um, so anyway, I literally worked for about eight hours yesterday and made zero dollars. So not only did I not make money, but I lost money and time and I was really frustrated and I was developing a headache, um, probably because of stress. And that's why I, I, I just finally gave up around midnight and I just went to bed early. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what that was. crap okay um um okay so jennifer finally got to her super chat um so she gave uh 200 swedish kroner um she says i have to say good night now but thanks for a nice stream what time is it it's i started this at three we're over two hours in, so it's got to be like five. I don't know. So I was trying to think of what time it is there, but um, it's probably middle of the night. TM USA says, uh, maybe you can sell your story for the movie rights. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going to put the story out there because, I mean, it's not like if I put the story out there, then somebody can't buy the movie rights to it. Because a lot of times somebody will like publish their story as a book and then um, like, uh, you know, so that's how the word gets out to some movie producer and then they buy the rights to it. So if I put this out as a story on my YouTube channel and some producer wants to make a movie about it, I mean, we can talk. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, I guess that would be a cool thing if that happens. Case says TMUSA is a regular too. I think he wants mod too. Uh, well, let's see what they say. Let's see if they commented. Case says you have one mom. You can have many girlfriend in your life. Yeah, that is true. But like I explained before, like I'm I'm really struggling with this, and that's kind of like I'm gonna talk to my cousin about it. Because my cousin and I have talked before about how she is frustrated as hell with my mom, too. Um, now, they're the same age. And I said something to her, to my cousin one time, about my mom. And she's like, oh, my God, thank you for saying that. She's like, I didn't want to say it, but, like, yes. Like, she's extraordinarily ungrateful for anything I do for her. And I'm like, so it's not just me. She's being that way with my cousin, too. Um... But, like, my cousin knowing kind of, like, what the case is with all that, I'm going to tell her why I haven't been talking to my mom and see what she says. And I want to, I'll explain the boundary thing, and I'll say, like, you know, I don't want to not have a relationship with her, but, like, I don't know what to do because I can't just keep letting her treat me like this. So maybe she can come up with some, some idea. Um... TMUSA says, Mark's mom seems narcissistic based on stories I've heard. This is the first I've heard about her not liking the girl. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that I haven't mentioned that on here before. It's upsetting, so it's, you know, kind of private. Um, but yeah, that's been the case. And this is not the first girl that she has not liked. Um, kind of in general, I don't think my mom likes anybody that I date. But there was one particular girl that I dated in high school that my mom had a huge problem with, too. Um, so it's it's not even specific to this girl. It's just like an ongoing issue. Case says, you might hate me for saying it, but mother's love is free, but girlfriend's love is usually bought. When you are given something free, you tend to value it less than something you paid for. Well, yeah. 
I mean, the one thing I should say is I'm not sure that my mom loves me. Um, I'm not sure that the girl did either. Um, but I will say that um, I don't think that I bought the girl's love. I mean, I know I just said I, I don't even know that she loved me, but, like, that last year, 2021, you guys saw me spending a ton of money on her, but that was the first time that ever happened. Prior to that, from 2012 when we met up until, let's say, 2020, the only things that I'd ever given that girl like money wise, I bought her a bottle of vodka one year for her birthday because she really wanted it. Um, I bought her a shot glass because she said she didn't have that. I gave her, you know, a couple of like my hoodies to wear, um, and a shirt. And okay, one time I sent her a t shirt for her birthday, I uh, just sent it in the mail, but that's it. And then in 2020, I bought her a drink at the gas station when we were on a road trip. I bought her dinner one night. Um, but then for 2020, that's it. It wasn't until 2021 that I spent any significant amount of money on her. So, I mean, I guess if I bought, like, bought anything to obtain her love, it was just, like, time and attention. Um, oh, TMUSA, I will be a mod if you want another one, no pressure either way. I do want people to weed out any crap that comes through during these live streams. Okay, yeah, um, let me, let me add you here. Okay, so everybody's on the same level, Every, um, all the mods that I've added today are um, just, it's, there's like two levels. You guys are lower level mods. I'll give you more permissions if, um, you know, the channel like blows up and um, we need that. I kind of need more time to review um, like what level can do what. Fresh Light says, even without mom angle, the girl did put restraining order on you, making even getting a decent job and home so difficult for you. And that too, as you always say, without you. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. So, um, so you're saying without the mom angle, the girl did put a restraining order on me. And yeah, that does make it hard to get a job and a house because of like the background checks. And, yeah, without doing anything wrong. Yeah, um, and there's, like, kind of a million reasons as to why I think she did that and that particular thing. I will get into that in the videos that I'm going to create. Um, because part of the lawsuit, part of what I sued her for was called abuse of process. And as part of that, you have to have an ulterior motive. So as part of my argument that I developed when I was assuming we were going to trial and I was going to have to argue this in front of a jury, I have a list of about 10 reasons that I think that she did that. Um, and I think it was a mixture of all of them. But there were reasons that she filed a restraining order against me, even though I didn't do any of the things that she accused me of. Um, so I, I'm a little bit lost, I think, as far as, uh, your comment, um, because I think, I'm not sure what it was referring to, but like, yeah, I agree with you. Um, she did do that and it does affect me in that way. And yeah, she did. Um, she did file it despite me not doing anything wrong. Case says the experiment, and we're talking about the line study here was a group of people all in all in it except one um 
shown three lines. One line is not the same length. Everyone says they are the same. When it is time for the target person to answer, he also answered incorrectly due to peer pressure. I think it's just called the conformity... Okay, the conformity experiment. Yeah, so that's where, like, I, I draw that comparison to that study. But that's where we differ, because I'm refusing to answer incorrectly. <laughs> I'm refusing to be gas-lighted, gas-lit. I don't know what the past tense of that is. Um, it doesn't matter that every single person is telling me that I'm the problem because I didn't feel like I was the problem. And then when I actually like looked at the evidence um, and was open-minded about like, am I actually crazy? Am, did I actually do this stuff? And then I go back and I look at the text messages and every piece of documentary evidence that I can find. And that matches up with my story. And then on the other hand, and we'll get into this when I make that big video, she's over here destroying evidence, shredding evidence, like <laughs> um, altering things, changing the dates on things. Um, and, and like, I'm just like, okay. Well, you know, I, I was open-minded to me being the problem. The evidence showed me I wasn't, and then that just kind of, like, sealed the deal with seeing that she's... It was like that scene from uh, The Wolf of Wall Street where they, they get raided by the government, and there's just people in there with, like, cases of documents, and they're just all, like, sitting at, at uh, like, shredding machines... <laughs> That's basically what my ex was doing during the lawsuit. Um, but, you know, she can, she can delete the messages off her phone or, or, you know, or, or block me on whatever, but I still have them on my end, so I don't even know what the point of that was. Um, uh, TM is talking to Case here. My impression is that Mark's mom is nothing that you or I experienced in a mother or a father for that matter, not nurturing or caring, expects him to pay for her storage, just unkind. Yeah, you know, I'm still upset about the damn storage. I told you guys I'm still I'm behind on that. I made sure to get mine caught up first, and I'm gonna try to get hers caught up now, but I'm still upset about that. And that's just another example of my mom only thinking about herself. Um, for those of you who might be hearing about this for the first time, basically, my mom, when she moved into the nursing home, was bound and determined she was not selling her house. And um, she fought in court. She actually did get an injunction to keep them from selling the house. And I was driving like two hours each way to go represent her. And it was this whole huge mess. Well, I fought so hard and then one day she called me and she's just like, I sold the house. And I was mad. And then she cried because I was mad and she thought that I would be happy about it. And I was like, why would I be happy about it? And I was like, you just did the thing that we've been fighting so hard not to do. Um, she sold the house and she lost a lot of money on it. And she just didn't have any plan for what to do with all of her stuff. She's in a wheelchair in a nursing home. She can't go get it. So she made a deal with the guy that bought it. She took some money off the house like the, that he was paying for him to gather up everything and put it in storage and pay for storage for six months. And then I had to pay it after that. Um, but like, but like, yeah, she, she saddled me with this responsibility. All these things that she find so important, like my great, great grandparents furniture and all these fam family heirlooms and stuff. And it's like that, you know, she didn't want to sell the house. So I fought for her not to be able to, not to have to sell it. And then she just decided one day she wanted to sell it. And then 
she stuck me with the storage cot. I, I don't know. It was just another thing. I'm just not in a place to be able to have something imposed on me like that. Kay says, I tend to avoid comparing families because I would do anything for my mom. If she wants me to pay for her storage, I would for all the years she helped me. See, I'm just not able to. That's the thing. My mom has not struggled financially like I have. And, um, yeah. I avoid comparing it because I also realize a lot of families have grown up and a lot of people have grown up in bad families. So it would not make sense for the mother to ask for money in those situations. Yeah. Um, SB says, do you love yourself? I, that's a hard question for me to ask because I don't really think about that. I don't... My only experience of love is for the girl. And I know what that looks like and I know what that feels like. I don't feel that for myself, and I think that would be weird if I felt like that for myself. Um, I don't think you're supposed to feel that way um, about yourself. But one thing I will tell you is I don't have any negative feelings about myself. I do like myself, and I like... Like, I'm happy with my my way of being, I'm happy with my body. Um, basically, this all comes about because when you start getting into people who are, have been abused, they start telling you like, oh, well, you know, you ended up like that because you have no self-esteem. You, you, you know, you think you're a bad person and none of that stuff applies to me. I don't have any kind of negative self image at all. And I think that's kind of forced on people who have experienced things like I did. Um, they tell you that, that that's the case. And maybe it is for some people, but it's not for me. Um, now, I will get into this in the videos that I'm going to make. I've done some things that I'm not proud of through all of this. To be clear, I didn't do any of the things that she accused me of. But I've done things that were, like, out of character for me in the like extreme stress that I've been put in. So I don't know. Um, if I had to answer one way or another, I'd say yes. It's a very hesitant yes, but I mean, the answer is not no. So <laughs> it's about, that's about as easy as I can answer that for you. Max says, what's the worst student loan story you know? Um, man, probably, I, I mean, mine is honestly probably one of the worst. Um, both the, like the high number, uh, and also like around 2015, 2016, at that time, how aggressively they were trying to collect the loans from me and like some of the extents they went to to do that um but other people i don't know like i don't know any specific stories i i just know that there are people that have like you know ridiculously high loan balances um like way higher than mine um which by the way guys mine is 40 I think I have 55,000 with Navient and then 34,000 federal. Keep in mind the federal will all be forgiven in 2037. Yeah, so anyway, it's a lot less than it used to be. Um, I have actually paid it down quite a bit. So really, it's only going to be that 55 or whatever I said for Navient that I'm going to have to end up paying off myself. 
And that really puts it into um, perspective of how little left it is. That's that's basically a car. Just have to pay off a car, which I've done before. Um, and then my, my student loans will basically be paid. Because, um, yeah, I'm on the save plan, so I'm not paying anything for the federal loans. And then they'll be forgiven in 2037. So, uh, I think there was one more comment. Uh, oh, Left Shark is leaving. Okay. Um, all right. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you for being a moderator. Just because I think, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but even though I'm not posting very often, the channel's still growing. Um, I actually have gotten, I think, 55 new subscribers this month. Um, so even though I'm growing very slowly, it, it is growing. We got new people here. Um, and there's just overall more people that'll be on the channel. So it probably is good that you guys are here to do this. Um, and I will, at some point, we'll probably have to figure out some kind of way to communicate, but we don't need to worry about that. That's, that's way down the road. Um, okay. TM USA says Mark is an eternal optimist for sure. That's a good quality to have. I think that's true. I mean, and it, that sometimes that makes me get frustrated with people because, especially with my channel, they say I'm homeless. They see my student loan stuff. Um, and they're, they kind of come in as like a, oh, woe is me. Like your life is over. Like you're, there's no hope for you. And I'm just like, chill out. Like, <laughs> Um, I'm the one going through it and I don't think that, um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see. TMUSA says, I've heard a caller on Ramsey of somebody with a million dollars in student loans. And John says he saw the YouTube video on that. He said you'd have to be a doctor to pay off a million dollars in student loan debt. I would say that a doctor would have a hard time doing that because they actually don't make all that much money. When you consider that for their job, they have to pay for things like malpractice insurance, which is just ungodly expensive. Um, John says, yeah, Mark, seeing you live in a car gave me some peace knowing I could do it if I if it ever gets to that for my life. So that's actually something that at some point I want to put in a, in a video. Um, because like when I first started living in the car, I was still, I still had my insurance and I was still going to therapy. And I remember one of the last appointments I had with my therapist, she asked me how I was dealing with living in my car. And I was just like, well, you know, it, I guess it's okay. And she's like, like, is it like, is it really okay? Like she, she, it was kind of like, she didn't believe me. And I'm just like, no, actually like it really is. And so I'd like to kind of make a video where I talk about how people make it into being this awful thing. And it's really not like, I would tell people like, go, you know, take your wife to Target and take a nap in the car while she's in there. That's what it's like. Like, um, or even go camping. Like, go camping for an evening. Sleep in the back of your car. It's not that bad. Like, and if you just experience it, um, it's not nearly as big of a deal as, as people make it to be. Um, yeah, I keep making videos on YouTube about it because people find it interesting. Um, but it's really not like, I don't know. It's not as just awful as people, um, want to make it out to be. But, um, okay. So, we're at the bottom of the comments right now. I did want to say one thing, and you guys can continue to comment. Totally fine. 
um, and I'll get to them, but I just wanted to put this out there. Um, I mentioned it before, but Mint, um, as of yesterday, no longer exists. And Mint is the software that I started using when I was back in college. I have tracked every transaction. Um, all my accounts were linked to it. It was just the complete picture of my finances. And I have... <laughs> I, I've basically... My whole life has revolved around that since I started. Since I started tracking my finances. And I thought it was 2012. That was my senior year of college. But when I looked to download my transactions, it I actually started in 2010. So it was when I was in college. And um, so for 14 years, I've been doing that. And I have all that data to track all of my finances over all that time. And it's just a huge, huge change for that to be going away. And I did download all of my transactions. I imported them to spreadsheets, so I at least have all of that if I need to look at it. Um, but it definitely, like, I'm basically, like, grieving a, a person. Um, I don't know what that's going to mean for future budget with me and budget review videos. I don't know. I don't know how we'll make those. Um, and then the other thing is, I don't know if there's a suitable replacement. There's three other apps that I'm trying out um, to try to see if they're better, but they don't exactly look promising. Uh, I mean, maybe I can get one to kind of do what I need and it might just not be as good as Mint, <sighs> but I'm sad about it. And it was also like kind of a huge, apparently they announced back in November that this was happening, but I was full lawsuit mode and in the process of moving. I don't remember that email. I saw online it was ending. And I, I mean, just like last moment got everything off there. So with everything else that I had to do this month, which has been a lot, um, I partially wrapping up things for the lawsuit and partially getting things ready to move back to Ohio and trying to get my finances caught up. And then in the middle of that, Mint throws this new thing up there. So now I have to, I have to find a replacement, try to save all my data. What did, uh, TMUSA says, what do you all use for budgeting? I've been using every dollar for over a year. It's probably not as sophisticated as Mint. So I don't think every dollar was even in the list that I looked at of, um, of replacements, but that's not free, is it? Cause I only considered free ones. There are a couple that I actually think might be good replacements for Mint, but they were both like a hundred dollars a year. Um, and like, you know, clearly in my situation, I'm not going to be paying a hundred dollars a year for that. Um, I did ask on the community tab and nobody responded as far as what they were using. So I don't know how people are budgeting. Oh, guys, I totally forgot. Okay. Drink of the day. I mentioned earlier, I'm very cash poor right now. I used my, um, rewards points to get free food at McDonald's. So this is McDonald's Coke Zero. Um, and then went to Quick Trip. And this is also Coke, Coke Zero. So I'm going to finish this one off. Um, so there was one other thing that I wanted to um, talk to you guys about. And this is, you know, like over two hours in. So I don't know if, if anybody's ever even going to see this. I talked earlier in the stream how there is one final thing that I have to do not for the lawsuit, but like with the girl in general, um, because it's the last thing that's on any kind of timeline. 
And um, I guess I won't go into a ton of details about it, but I'll go ahead and tell you. I'm stressed, but I've, I'm going to have it in on time. Um, and basically what it is, is there is a, um, throughout this whole lawsuit thing, you know, there's, there's like two separate issues here, right? There's the girl accusing me of stuff and then the restraining order that came from that. Like that's one issue. But the other issue is the courts and how like I was denied due process and then like just completely up the line of appeals. Everybody refused to even review anything. So there's one last thing I can do about that. And there is a two year statute of limitations, which means that I have to have this turned in by April 7th of this year. Um, and then the second one is due by April 22nd um, because it's a two year statute of limitations. So I'm getting it in right under the deadline because I had that like month or two um, to have a little bit of breather between dropping the lawsuit and this. Um, I'm going to file this. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to press charges against the judges. Um, judges in West Virginia cannot be legally charged and you can't sue them in a civil case. But because of that, there is a separate entire process um, for pursuing charges against judges. And you can only charge them for violating the judicial... Oh, God, what was it called? The Judicial Code of Ethics, I think. Um, and, I mean, it's been a while since we've talked about this because I've been so lawsuit-focused. But you guys know when all this happened, like look, the judges didn't follow the rules. They didn't act properly. Um, and that's been a big part of this, um, of why it's been so bad and why it was so damaging to me. So I'm doing that. Um, I am filing charges against the family court judge and against the circuit court judge. And I don't want you guys to be concerned about it because most likely what this is going to be is I'm going to send it in and they're just going to be like, yeah, we don't care. Um, because that's what's happened at every level of the court system. Now, I mean, maybe they will. It would be great if they did, but I'm not counting on it. I'm just covering all my bases. I've told you guys I'm tying up loose ends. These just happen to be the last loose ends that have a timeline or a deadline associated with them. The few other things I have to do, I can do on my own time when I'm more prepared. Um, but I'm going to get these in under the deadline. And so, yeah, what this is, this goes to a committee that reviews judges um, and their ethical behavior. Um, they can either dismiss it. They can issue an admonishment to the judge. Uh, it's like a written admonishment that's made public. Um, or they can press charges, which... It's kind of the same thing as criminal charges, but it's um, it's slightly different. But essentially, the, the judge actually has to go on a trial that's put on by this committee um, where I would go testify at the Supreme Court. Um, the judge will have to testify in front of the Supreme Court. We bring in witnesses, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I don't want you guys to worry because this is not like a very lengthy, labor-intensive process like all this other stuff has been. There's like a form that I fill out and then there's a maximum of five pages that can be written um, to describe what happened. I don't even necessarily have to do the research to match up what he did with like the canons that it violated. This committee is a lot more layperson friendly in that way. Um, so I'm going to do the legwork to put up everything I had a problem with and put it in that description but it's a lot less work than all the other legal stuff was. So um, because of these deadlines, I'm going to have these in by April 7th and April 22nd. And then we just wait. And like I said, I don't really have much faith that they're going to do anything. But maybe they will. And maybe this will finally be the way that this gets addressed. 
Um, it's not like this, they don't have the power to like take the restraining order away or like fix any of the problems. But this is kind of like when you write a review for a company on Google because they did something awful or like you go to the, the company's website and like submit a complaint. Um, it, it's basically that. Um, but I will say that that lawyer that I had at the end of the, he helped me write the appeal and then he advised me as far as filing the lawsuit. Um, this was the thing that he pushed the most. He said that more than anything, more important than the lawsuit, this was the most important thing because he knows these judges. He agrees that what they did was completely wrong. Um, and that it needs to be brought to the attention of, you know, somebody. Um, and that's what this is doing. So they can't really undo any of the harm. I mean, best case scenario, the judge will actually get in trouble. Um, and I'll get some kind of validation that, yes, what was done to me, you know, other people see that it was wrong and, and bad. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. Um, and then I'm going to be free. There are still a few loose ends that will be tied up after that. But like I told you guys, they don't have any timeline. I can take my time with those. After these two things are submitted, I'm done. Um, I can stop worrying about the next thing that's coming down the pipeline. And I can just focus on myself and my healing and getting my money up and all of that. So let me see if I missed any comments. Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, so TMUSA says there is a free version of every dollar and a paid version is $80 a year and it downloads bank transactions and balances automatically. Non-paid non -paid version is a manual load. When you say it's a manual load, do you mean that you have to enter the transactions manually or do you mean there's like a refresh button that you have to manually uh, hit in order to import those. Because if it's that, I wouldn't mind that so much. You had to do that sometimes with Mint. Like, normally it would come in on its own, but occasionally it didn't. And the, other th the only other thing is that every dollar thing. I think maybe I missed... Maybe I skipped that because I don't believe in allocating every dollar in budgeting. Because it's more of like a Dave Ramsey thing. Max says, how much money did you win from your settlement? Uh, well, I don't actually technically have a settlement. Um, we didn't settle. Uh, well, okay. This is a little complicated. I guess it's the terminology. So I dropped the lawsuit, um, meaning that I sent to the judge what's called a stipulation of dismissal. Um, and I didn't ask for anything. When I make those videos, going through like the whole relationship and everything that happened, including the lawsuit, um, in context, it'll make a lot of sense. What I found out during the discovery process made it so that I didn't feel that I should continue the lawsuit um, based on some stuff that I found out about her. Um, so I did not ask for anything. Now, her lawyer tried to convince her to pay the money back that she owed me, and she was absolutely not having that. Um, so she wouldn't even listen to her own lawyer about that. But, um, but yeah, I... I basically just said, I'm dropping this. You don't need to pay me anything to get me to do that. Um, and the reason I did it that way was because I found something out that made me want to drop the lawsuit. Like, like I, I myself wanted to drop it. So I didn't want to set up any impediment 
I didn't want to say like, well, you have to pay me this money and then I'll drop the lawsuit. Um, because I didn't figure she would do it. And then I'd have to go through with trial and spend a ton of money that I don't have um, to do that. And because of what I found out, well, one, I think morally it would be wrong to continue pursuing it. And two, I don't know that I'd technically be able to get a conviction because, and I can't really explain it more than that, because what I found out about her that I did not know before, I think might make a jury less likely to award damages. Like they may find her liable. Like they might be like, yeah, you absolutely did this on purpose, but they might not actually grant me any money for it just because I think that they would feel bad for her. Um, and again, I'm speaking very vaguely because I'm going to tell the story later. I think really it can only be to told in like full context. Um, but yeah, in the end, I decided to stop pursuing it because I felt it was morally wrong based on what I found out. And I'm now pursuing, like, going after the judges that did this because, I mean, they, they definitely were in the wrong. Um, so I'm pursuing not her, but the people and the agencies that caused me the damages like once she brought me into the system the people that that hurt me through that system um tm usa says non-paid version of every dollar you load every single transaction every time you use your debit oh my god i there is no way i could do that um i so I had 25,899 transactions on Mint. And, um, yeah, there's just no way. Because especially, now I'm pretty organized, but especially living in the car, like, I would be losing stuff everywhere. The picture would never be right because I'd forget to write something down or it would just be a mess. So I know I could not do that one. So I'm trying Pierre, um, money by Yodley and empower, which used to be personal capital. Um, and I'm trying to see if I can make any of those three work. So, Oh, uh, Max says, did you, do you find women do not want Todd? Uh, I don't know who Todd is. Do you find women do not want Todd? I, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> um, so I feel like there was more that I wanted to announce to you guys. And I honestly do not remember it now. Um, I've talked throughout this about a bunch of plans for the coming months. I think the next week or so I'm going to have to hunker down. I, I don't think it's going to take as long as I'm expecting, but I don't want to wait to the last minute and stress myself out. Um, So I, what I'm going to do is for the next couple weeks anyway, I'm going to pretty much disappear from YouTube and I'm just going to, um, I'm going to go through and, um, get these last things written for court and, um, that's pretty much it. Um, like I know the second one's not due till the 22nd, but it's a lot shorter than the first one. There's a lot less to write. And once I get 
comfortable with the format from writing the first one, the second one should go pretty quickly. So I'll probably get it done before the 22nd. So basically, the next time that you guys hear from me, I should have all of that filed. There still might be some follow-up, like, you know, if they mail me something. The judge does get to file a response, um, which, I mean, I don't know what his response is going to be other than denying all of it. But then we have the video of the hearing showing that he did it. So um, it's just really going to be up to the committee watching the video and seeing, you know, what they think of his behavior. Um, okay, so Max, do, okay, do you find women do not want to date you since you sued your last ga gal pal? And I'm, I'm guessing that's Max's mom answering or asking that. Um, no, that hasn't actually been an issue at all. Um, every girl that I have talked to since then has not had an issue with it. Um, the two girls that I can think of in particular that, you know, was more than like talking and it, it actually looked like it might develop into something. Um, we both talked specifically about it. Now, the first one, um, she understood because she actually had the same problem that my ex had. I won't go into any more detail about that right now, but they had the same issue. So she kind of understood like what was going on with my ex that would lead to that. Um, and then the second thing, um, the second girl, I've talked about her on the channel before. Uh, she's the girl that like we really hit it off and then she bought a house with the girl she told me not to worry about. And, um, they're like together now. <sighs> um, she definitely did not have a problem with it. She was actually going through a separation at the time that we met. And I mean, she knew extensively because I was like completely deep into the lawsuit at the time. And as I was doing informal discovery, I would, I would send her picture or I'd send her like a picture of like something that I'd gotten in a document for informal discovery. And, and she would just be like, Oh my God, that like, that's ridiculous. Like there's, um, um, Max, I see the comment again. I'm that's, that's, I'm currently answering uh, that question. Um, but, but like, yeah, I mean, there was one instance where I got this court document and it was talking about her biting somebody and it was like a police report. And I, um, and I just sent it to, to Amy Jo. That's her name. The girl, the second girl. And we, we were just like, what the heck? Um, so I mean, no, the answer to your question is no. Um, it hasn't been an issue with anyone because like when I start dating somebody, I don't really say like, oh yeah, like I sued my ex. Like it's not something I bring up right away. Um, I mean, it's pretty normal for somebody to ask like straight away, like, you know, what happened with your last relationship or how long have you been single? And um, that I can answer pretty easily. But it's only, like, with those two girls, because, like, we we were talking for a long time that it was brought up that uh, that happened. Or in the case with Amy Jo, I was, like, really deep into the lawsuit and stressed about it. And she was deep into her custody battle um, with hers. And so, like, we would kind of support each other going through that. Um but no, she, she totally believed me. Um, she, she even said, I mean, not that this is like a good quality, but she, she was like, well, no, like for me, it seems like restraining orders are normal because my parents file them against each other all the time. 
<laughs> it was like definitely not a good family dynamic, but, um, you know, at, at least you believe me. Um, and I think that that's kind of a, a good test. I think, I mean, I don't want to date somebody who believes that, you know, just because a woman makes an accusation that that's the truth because that's not the truth. And my case illustrates that. Um, um, I don't want the person I'm dating to automatically assume that, you know, if I say something didn't happen, that I'm lying. Um, and this is kind of a test that gets past that. When I bring this up and I say, this is what happened. Um, I haven't had anybody leave, but if they did, then it's kind of like, well, I wouldn't have wanted that person to, you know, not believe me in the future. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess the answer to your question is no, it, it hasn't been an issue. Um, I do also think that if I even, if I were to tell anybody what happened, they would understand. And in the future, when I put these videos up where I explain everything that happened, um, it won't even have to be a conversation we have. I can just put that up there. I can say, here's video number one. This explains everything. If you really want to know, watch this. And if they really do that, I don't think there's going to be any doubt as to what I went through. Because this, I'm going to tell you guys what happened, but I'm also going to show you proof. Not like it, I was in court. I'm not, you know, proving everything with evidence, but some of the major things, I'm actually going to bring out the pictures. I'm going to show you the text messages. I'm going to show you, like, not just say, but I'm going to show you that I am telling the truth and that the things that she said not only are not true, but are not even possible. Um, so yeah, but no, it hasn't been an issue. Um, I feel like it probably will be with somebody at some point and that's going to suck, but again, I guess I, I just wouldn't want to be with somebody who wouldn't believe me. So let me see here. Um, okay. So that was the last comment. I don't see any more comments. I'm not even sure if the moderators are still on here because we've been on for a long time. Um, so basically guys, you might not hear from me again until the end of April, just depending on how this writing thing for court goes. We'll just have to see, but you guys know I'm working. I'm trying to get caught up financially and I got to do these last two writing assignments and then I'll be free. I can take a breath for the first time in at least two years. And I think I'll be able to get my mind organized and maybe my life too. So, um, I'll get this done and then I'll get moved back to Ohio. Probably right before that, we'll do the live stream at the end of April. Um, TMUSA, thank you. Have a good month. It's going to be a great spring and summer for you. I, it's got to be better than the last two or three. Um, but I think you're right. I think it's going to be less stressful. And I think that for the first time in a long time, I'm going to have time to focus on making my life better. So thank you for everybody watching. Thank you again, Jennifer, for the super chat. Um, and welcome to the new mods. Um, at some point, we'll get organized about stuff. For, but for now, you guys, just if you see I'm doing a live, just hop on if you can. Um, and if you can't be here, that's okay too. Uh, but I appreciate you guys wanting to do that. Um, so we are at 219 minutes. 
and I don't feel like mathing to figure out how long that's been in hours. Um, but I think it's time to close. So if anybody has any comments after the stream, feel free to just comment after this re-uploads. Um, and I will see you guys in about a month after I'm finally done with everything. So, all right. I'll see you guys next month.